Hey there, sexy. What can I get for you? All right, sports fans. Oh, I think Mark can hear me now. Okay, cool. Sport. Okay. Whoa. Mech, mech it's, Warriors. It's working. Yeah, it's working. Mech, mech Warriors. Stargate enthusiasts. Uh, Battletech fans. We got three. We got, we got, we got two big sci-fi universes here. And we've got a man here who has been involved heavily with both of them. Uh, for those of you that know me, I'm RJ Bass, and if you've been following my stream for a couple years, you know that he, that my guest tonight is no stranger to my stream. He comes by, he drops by all the time. Many of the things we're going to be discussing tonight, we've actually discussed on my stream before. He, he's never been shy with chatting us up about, about all things Stargate and Battletech, and so everybody, I, I'd like you to, to, to give a big... Warm welcome to PGI's own Mark Nicholson. Mark, how you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing great. 
Uh, it's 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 really good to have you back here, man. I, I it's, been it's, a, it's, it's been a while since since we've gotten together. It's been a bit, yeah. We the, the last six months, I haven't I haven't been on as much. Uh, part of it was just making a concerted effort to try and break into tier one. <laughs> and, and how's that working out for you? Oh, I did it a while ago, and then my summer got busy, and I haven't I haven't been playing much in the last month and a half. Well, but before we get knee deep into all the all the the BattleTech MechWarrior Stargate questions, why don't you why don't you fill in everybody a little bit about yourself? You know, uh, give, give us some give us the general basic bio. Okay. Uh, so, I, I've been at Prana Games for about two years now. Uh, I'm going to go backwards. Okay. Um, and uh, for most of that time, I've been a mech modeler building battle mechs. The first couple months, I was building cockpit items and doing a couple other things. Um, and then there was a couple years where I was doing other jobs. And then earlier than that, for five years, I was building film props most of which was on Stargate, and I, I did work on a few other projects as well, which were kind of fun. Sometimes we were too busy to work on projects. I, I didn't get to work on Tron Legacy, which I would have liked to. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, like, total first world problem, but it's like, oh yeah, here's some plans for stuff for Tron. Oh yeah, we're too busy, we're gonna have to say no, and I'm sitting there going, no, working on Tron would be, yeah. I got to work on A-Team, which was, uh, incredible it's, I loved that show as a kid um yeah and then like video games was always what I wanted to do and I ended up falling into building film props uh doing that was not something I planned to do but it was tons of fun and I learned well, a lot I, I mean I, I was just gonna say you always wanted to work in video games but you fell into film props I, that had to be really it, freaking cool i mean I, it, totally it was and almost no one i met there ever planned to do that like it's a very weird industry <laughs> it's it's really biz bizarre all the time and uh, mythbusters is the best equivalent thing to describe what it's like to people who don't know yeah because those guys worked in the film industry as well I, obviously yeah, did the special and, effects it, it's very similar. You you just see the shop that's just full of tons of stuff around them all the time. And, you know, their environment was very clean for the show. <laughs> uh, oh, there's... Uh, oh, I'm having a total brain fart here. This is what happens when I get nervous. Uh, you know, I've talked to you a million times, but, you know, I, now we do a formal interview. And I, all of a sudden now, now I it's gotta official get all and you have yeah. to you freeze up. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not nervous. Uh, very popular sci-fi show sci-fi show currently on the sci-fi channel like immensely popular current one I, uh, the, uh, what is the name of it, it, it but it, one of the, one of the, one of the mythbusters guys was just on it like uh, the season finale or something I can't remember the name of the the expanse yeah uh, McVallion got it do you watch the expanse okay I have not. Um, actually, Alex Iglesias has been telling me really good things about it, but I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. Do you... I, I've seen a couple clips, but... Okay, uh, you know, by, by, any cool. chance, by any chance, do you subscribe to Amazon Prime? No, okay. I do not. Okay, I was going to say, because you can watch the entire first and second season on Amazon Prime. It's there right now. But yes, you do need to watch that. That is, hands down, the best sci-fi, in my opinion, my personal opinion. I've, I've be been best... hearing they've done good things with space battles and uh, actually where, how things maneuver in space as opposed to um, you know Star Wars right? which is flight battles in space yeah, yeah exactly. and naval battles in space <laughs> looks yeah. cool but doesn't make sense yeah it, it is a phenomenal phenomenal show I'm so addicted to it and, and then is that Jamie Heineman is that his name from Mythbusters he was he was in one of the final episodes of the second season. It was pretty cool. Wait, what? Yeah. Jamie Heineman, that's his name, right? Yeah. Oh my alerts. 
But NG, NG, thank you for the host. Sorry, my alerts are going off. I tried to figure out how to turn those things off, but I couldn't. Wait, wait. I think you mean Adam Savage based on the pictures I'm looking at. Oh, here. yeah, 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 yeah. Adam. It was Adam Savage. Yeah. I'm sorry. I got my guys. No, no, because uh, my impression is Jamie, he Jamie Heineman is not a very public person. He doesn't like getting out in front of people, whereas Adam Savage loves it and is someone I would love to meet because I think we have a lot in common after yeah. all this. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to meet. I'd like to meet. All the guys, all everybody from from MythBusters. That was that was a cool show too. But let let's let's backtrack a little bit. I kind of had a direction I wanted to take, and, and, you, and feel free to change the direction all you want. Uh, the, okay. The, I, I I wanted to start Mech Warrior with Mech Warrior BattleTech stuff. That's that's the most recent stuff you've been working on, and then and then work our way into Stargate, kind of finish off the night with Stargate. For, uh, the hey work, there, the work, sexy. Work it there. What wow. can I get for you? What is going on here? Oh, so, I'm sorry, everybody. My alerts, I tried to figure out how to turn them off and they won't turn off. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna mess just, with that Just later. ignore it. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore just, it. Just, okay. just ignore it. Uh, so let's, uh, let, let's talk, let's talk Battletech mech warrior to start and then we can get it we can get get knee deep into stargate uh the film industry the time, the, all the time you spent there because I, I i did i did promote this interview on the reddit page for stargate too hoping we get some of the some of the good the big stargate heads come out as well so i i'm sure there's i know in fact i know a couple of them are here and i'm sure they're gonna have plenty of questions to ask you let's Okay, you said you've been with PGI for two years, and yep. you're you're a 3D modeler. Uh, you've done some cockpit items. You mentioned that. What what mechs exactly have you have you been primarily responsible for? And and and, and, and for those of you who don't know, we're talking about Mech Warrior Online. It's a it's a first person shooter game based in the BattleTech universe. Uh, it's developed by Piranha Games Incorporated. Uh, Mark has been working with them for two years now. In fact, I have I have the game. I actually I have the game up at the same time here. Let me see. Yep. Oh, I gotta turn off these other things here. But yeah. So what what mechs what mechs have you worked on? I can actually pull because I got the. I know you worked on the Viper. I've got the Viper actually up on my screen right now. Yeah. Yeah. I I. Switched my Viper back over to be the three LRM five version from one of the first times we were playing together. Learn. Remember that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. You and Poor were giving me a hard time about LRMs, and I'm like, fine, I'm gonna put LRMs on my Viper. Oh. And that's why I put them back on. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> I, we, we, we might have to end the interview now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, this is this is what goes on. Is I I really enjoy building Max and trying different things. I well, I, I, when I, when I was ten years old, I started just building Max on paper for fun, like like designing different custom designs for BattleTech. That that was what I did with a couple Saturday mornings instead of going outside or other things. And, as, that's not very normal for a ten year old. Oh, it depends on the to ten-year-old. Sit there, because I, I to just... sit there and do math. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I used to try to draw Max when I was a kid, but I was a terrible artist. However, you take in your artistic skills, and you brought them, well, not only to the world of Stargate, obviously, but to the to this this video game franchise that so many of us love. I mean, I, I, got, I got the Viper on screen right now. I got it with my own paint and decals on there. But this is, a, to me, this is a really cool-looking 3D model. I mean, we, we took we take the Viper, for example. How, how long did it take you to make the model uh, for this start to finish? I mean, it, it take, well, take us through. Take us through <laughs> when, 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 when you get the artwork, when you get the hand-drawn stuff, and they, and they say, okay, here you go, Mark. We need this in game. Get it done. From from that till the point where we see it, or the point where the model is finished and it's ready to go in game. How long of a time period are we talking about there? Uh, from start to finish, for my role, 
Uh, for that one, I had two months, so eight weeks. Um, and that's uh, Alex will hand me concept art and uh, orthos, sometimes orthographic drawings where it's like straight front on, straight side. Um, so that will get to me, and I'll get eight weeks to turn that into a 3D model uh, that is game ready with uh, UVW maps already on it and a normal map baked on for all the high poly details. And then I will send that to the texture artists to actually put little shiny colors on it. Okay, so when you when you make one of these mechs, uh, let me think here. Well, oh. here, hang on. Okay. I can I can send you a picture of what it looks like without all those things. Oh, yeah, well, I've got already I've got, I've, on the internet. Well, I've got one here in just a basic OD green. Is that? Uh, no, I'm trying to find something better. Okay. If I can actually click on things. Um, the, po the power of the clicking. I don't even I don't even have one here. I'm gonna have to go to my website. You have a website. Uh, I do. Is it one that the community can know, or is this just for when you're promoting yourself for work and things like that? It's it's work promotion. Okay. But, uh, obviously, it means people are going to have access to my email from that. But oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah. Let's not do that then. Yeah, if people that. if people look look me up at all, they're probably going to find it real fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I am linking an image in Twitch chat that actually just has the website. I don't care. Oh, okay. So when you so get you wanna... so when you get done with the Viper, that that's what we're that's that's what you hand them, and then they and then the other artists add in all the other stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna. So like, there's another artist who will do all the textures so you know putting on the base colors uh you know all the little details what parts are shiny what parts aren't um and then there's another artist you probably have heard of lauren who mostly does a lot of the skins and uh, sometimes they trade back and forth about who's doing what uh and then there's another um animator technical artist actually uh breaking it all down and putting it in the game Oh yeah, Lauren is somebody that I, I... Well, it's been a while with Lauren too, longer than it has been for you and me, but uh, she used to come out for a lot of uh, my, my charity 24-hour mechathons. And that, yeah. in fact, there was... There was, there, I've there come was out for some of those too. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. But there, there was a there was a uh, running joke for a couple of them there where we were we were trying desperately to get Lauren to come join us, and but it was still working hours or something. And so I kept tweeting Russ... Russ Bullock, by the way, who is the who is the the, the head cheese at PGI. I kept tweeting him like, Russ, can Laura come out to play? And something. Uh, he, he never responded though, so I don't. Know. It's been a... I I I, I can guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, so the the Viper is yours, and this is a mech. In. In Mech Warrior Online, this this is a mech that I never really, well, I haven't really played with it too much since, since the new technology is put in place and the skill tree is put in put in place. But when it first came out, this was a mech that I had a lot of fun with. Yeah, the ability for it, it to it's jump a lot so of well, fun. you know, I, I was building. It, it two, doesn't jump; it flies. Yes, basically, because I, I actually made a GIF of it and I put it on Reddit on outreach and it actually it's one of the few posts i've made on outreach that actually gets upvoted because usually i get downvoted to oblivion on there but uh, I, I put this i put this gif up and i was on hpg and i i jumped i went to jump and i went under a pipe i, I jumped i fell off a ledge and then but then hit my jump jets and went under a pipe so as i was falling i easily came right back up and onto the other side and was able to start shooting mechs again and no mech in the game could do that or even remotely close maybe that spider 5k if you filled it full of jump jets but this thing this thing yeah you're right it just absolutely flies and while it wasn't a meta mech at the beginning it was certainly an extremely fun mech to play fast could jump well look looks really freaking cool 
I mean, you did a great job with the modeling on it. I'm gonna go back to my Thanks. my hero of it here because I just I love the way this mech looks. This looks I don't know mean. Great looking mech. It, it it does look fun. I I really liked it. I do know that uh, gift you're talking about with the jumping because I remember seeing that and going, okay, yeah, this thing does just fly, <laughs> and with with the skill tree, it flies better. Wow. Oh well, yeah, I was. I've had a, I, I was I've actually, had a few. I, well, go, go ahead, because I was just going to say, I, was, I, I just pulled it up today, because this is the only mech in particular I could remember. I know you made quite a few. Yeah, I, I, I've got the list, I think, of, okay. of them afterwards. Well, um, when level, level designers are working on free? things, I always point that out to them as the, the gold standard for where people can get to if they really want to. Oh. And, and it makes them go, oh no, it can get where? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because I, I pointed that out in a couple places. There was a couple places I was able to get to with that Mac on maps that have since have gotten, have all of a sudden developed this, these strange invisible walls. <laughs> it's, it's very you interesting. Can't imagine why. No. Can't imagine why at all. But, 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 but I, yeah. I, I've got my skill tree up for the Medusa right now. And I never, yeah. I never, ever, ever mess with the jump jet tree. You know, 228 competitive play we we focus more on survivability mobility and weapons clearly you know because competitive play yeah. i never mess with the with the jump jets but this is one of those mechs that i felt like if i tweak the jump jet tree a little bit it's going to make it even that much better and i've only run it in the testing grounds but it really seems to have really take i really helped it quite a bit it's so much fun but we'll we'll take them out later today and have yeah, some fun with that. Let's do that. What's another mech? Show us, give us another mech here. Okay, where, where is the list? Uh, the next one I did was the Huntsman. Huntsman, I've, I've got the Huntsman. So and... I'm, I'm gonna pull up the hero again. All right, let's take a good close look at this. This is a this is a cute mech. And when you look when you look that... at the hero, it looks like a little kitty cat, which I'm sure this is one of BB Wolf's favorites. But. Yeah, it's got the neat cat on the front there. Yeah. I like this mech. This one, this one is one of my favorites that I managed to pull out, where a lot of it worked really well. And do you have your original, your original 3D model of it that we can put up on the stream? Uh, I do have one of those as well. Uh, I, I haven't actually gotten all of them out that way, but. Um, there, it's in chat again, so people can open it up on their own. Okay. All right, let's pull this one down here. All right, there's the Huntsman. That Okay, so when Mark... Hey, hey RJ, uh, yeah. I just got banned from the chat. <laughs> you what? Uh, uh, poor just said whoops. Poor, okay, I'm gonna have to remove Poor's. It, it might not have been him. It might have just been the bot taking me out for links. No, I don't. I've, I have links turned on. I mean, I mean, I don't. You, you can, you can link. Well, here. Uh... <laughs> he's, he's... <laughs> uh, oh, someone's asking why do all IS mechs have that pitted armor and clan smooth armor? Is it a lore thing? Uh, partly, it. They describe the level of care that people take with them in in some of the things as well. We wanted uh, again. This is before I even got there, so I don't know all of it. But no, you want the mechs to look a little different, so you can kind of get an idea of which is which. Well, I got I got the uh, initial 3D render up, the link that you posted, and supposedly got yeah. banned for here. But I've made you a moderator on the channel, so that <laughs> that won't happen again. <laughs> Okay, the, the, so so I can ban uh, I can ban for the, the, the huntsman. Okay, so I don't I don't know what it is about the mechs that you designed, but we, we okay, the viper was incredibly fun. The huntsman when it came out was another mech that I mean I, I if I if I pull the loadout up for this one, I run it with two ER PPCs. You know that was my thing for a while there. It's still PPCs are yeah. kind of our thing uh, in comp play, long range, etc another mech that i've had a lot of fun with uh how much time did you get to make this one um a little less uh, usually we we have about seven weeks to put them together yeah we have to work on a like a schedule you know getting production done is a thing so 
You mean, you mean Ru I, Ru Russ actually keeps your, your feet to the fire there? Uh, technically, my art director is the okay. one who does that, but uh, no, it's production. You have to do things I, in I a time period, I'm which I'm means... Playing, I'm playing with you. I'm playing I, with you. I, 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 would, I would love to... Like, when you make weapons, there's also, like, the custom parts that attach the weapons to the body of the mech. I would love to spend more time making each of those more detailed and more elaborate every time and i don't have enough time to do that um i'm, I'm about to start doing that on the nova cat I, i'm i'm very near to that point right now and i'm don't have enough the time nova cat long. well it's 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 funny you you mentioned the nova we, cat. We, we've skipped to the bottom of the list real quick there yeah well it's funny you mentioned nova cat i mean obviously i don't i don't own it yet because it hasn't come out in game yet but that no uh last month Two months ago, I was participating in one of those stock mech tournaments. I got most of my guys, most of the guys were on my comp team at the time to participate, and we just, we we wiped the board clean. And so all of us got a standard mech pack of our choice. And at the time, the the early adopter bonuses were still in effect for, for Civil War II. And so most of us picked the, no, the Nova Cat. So I'm gonna own another one of the mechs that you designed. I'm gonna be pretty happy about that, I'm sure. But the, the Huntsman, again, another fun mech. To it's places. a Swiss Army knife. It, it is. It, it, you can put anything on it. I, I found when I, when I first started with it that the center torso is a little fragile, and it's not particularly mobile, but you can put any kind of weapon on it and, and build anything with it. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get both of these up at the same time. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is an OD Green Huntsman, and then one of your drawings of the Huntsman at the, oops at the same time here. So when you do you do the gray model, yeah, yours is gray. The other artists come in behind you. They they add the color and everything else. How much of that work have you done before? Because you said you started off doing cockpit items. Did you ever did you ever work on the side where you where you took the, the model and made some, and added the extra things into it? Or uh, for the cockpit items, yeah, I was doing texturing, but not for the mechs. Not for the mechs. We have okay. we have three artists who just texture mechs. It it's a remarkable amount of work. How many? Just how... get it. How many mechs could they have you working on at one time? I mean, do you normally just have one project to do at a time, or just, just one at a time? It's <laughs> when you're when you're building just the the high poly mech model, it's fairly easy. But when you're trying to keep track of and name and deal with uh, over 200 weapons, because you have to build every single possible combination, no, you don't want to be trying to do other things at the same time. It's enough. Yeah. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Uh, uh, is a is a typical work day at PGI is that eight hours or do you guys oftentimes have to burn the midnight oil in there if you're, if you're running behind on a deadline? Uh, I mean, what's that? Um, what's what's the typical what's the typical what's the typical day at PGI like for you? Um, work life balance is really nice. Um, most of the time I am working like eight hours, you know, uh, sometimes nines, whatever. Uh, things do need to get done uh and there are some people who do put in a lot of extra time to keep things going um the people who worked on the metcon demo for uh mech warrior 5 oh yeah put in a bunch of they put in a bunch of extra time um uh, speaking of mech warrior 5 are you doing any work for that uh mech warrior 5 is a whole big can of can't talk about that. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's let's. Fortunately, see. the reality is that I, I'm not going to be able to comment on anything on that. Okay, well, well, let's let's switch the the topic a little bit. We do know that the the BattleTech turn-based strategy game from from Hairbrain Schemes. We know that they licensed art from PGI. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. The, there was. I, I know very little about it, but yeah, no. They they got the three D models from us, okay. and we have an agreement with them for that. Okay. So, if you design, if like like the Huntsman, I still got the Huntsman on screen right on screen right now. 
if you design a mech say it's a throwback mech going back to the the 2030s 2020s when the battletech when the battletech turn-based strategy game is, is is around and you design a mech that goes back to that era and harebrained schemes license that mech or that artwork from you guys your mech would then appear in the battletech turn-based strategy game right uh that would be the case. Uh, their cutoff happened before any mechs I made were eligible to get in there, so well, there's no assassin. Well, just hi hypothetical. Okay. Hypothet I know. Hypothetical. No. A a assassin, javelin, totally mechs I made that could have gone in there if they had more time or they make an expansion in the future or something. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I was I was sad when I realized that that wouldn't happen. But it. So. <laughs> but it could. It could. It's, it's, it could. It's it's it, it's it's. I think it's gonna be. I mean, I, I've I've played I've played the the pre or the limited release beta. I like it. It's. I've never played anything but mech warrior based type games. I've never played turn based strategies before, so I struggled with it quite a bit. But I could I could easily see your mechs going there, and and likewise, you don't have to say anything. I know you can't. But if mechs that you designed for for MechWarrior Online make their way into MechWarrior 5, I can only assume that we, we could then possibly see your artwork in MechWarrior 5. Uh, that, that could happen. Yes. Okay. That's all, that's all you could say. I, I get it. <laughs> all right. Is there any other mechs we should look at? What, 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 what mech are you, that you've designed are you most proud of? Um, so there was the Viper, the Huntsman, the Supernova, the Assassin, the Javelin, the Uziel, uh, and then uh, the Osiris isn't out yet, and the Nova Cat isn't out yet. Okay, so out of the one, what, out of the ones that are out, which one is your which? Okay, actually, let's put it this way: which one did you have the hardest time with? Um. What if I had a hard time with? Uh, the the Osiris and the Nova Cat and the Uziel all have been giving me a bit of a hard time. Um, Uziel, let's take a look at the Uziel. That's an inner sphere medium. It, it's its legs are so complicated, which is part of why the animation for it is, has had issues. It, um, and then there was uh, the, oh. the biggest yeah the biggest problem I had Sorry, go ahead. I had with it was this. When you pull that missile off the center torso, what goes there? Oh, okay. So yeah. So let's get rid I, of that. I had to figure that one out. And, and so that was a really interesting oh. time trying to... Okay, so this little hood thing that's up here. I mean... Yeah. Okay, what I'm doing when I'm doing my pre-stream before I go live, I've got a, actually got a picture of Mech Warrior online, and it has a picture of the Uziel on it. It's obviously an old picture before anybody knew what mechs were gonna be really in Mech Warrior yeah. online, but the Uziel is in it, and it's got the missile hard point. I don't think I've ever seen a picture of the Uziel. With no one it. has. That's the whole point. So <laughs> it's always been on there on every single version up until I had it, and it was like. Alex hadn't thought about it either or drawn me anything. And it was like, oh. So we kind of sat down for a bit and he'd kind of planned that little vent on the front. Um, if you turn it around, the part on the back was the part that I totally made up on my own that I kind of Which part? really like. It's turn it all the way around. I did. Behind behind the hood. I, I, there are the videos. So that all that little zigzaggy um, oh. scale plate stuff. I'm talking about right up in the center, uh, right? Okay. Yeah. So it, it the those plates all go all the way across the top as well, and, and so that was something I was like, okay, I get to draw my own thing here. What should I do? And I that. So we're looking at original artwork by Mark Nicholson here, not based off of, not based off of previous the, drawings, the previous back, renditions. The, the back of the pelvis, all a lot of the little details in there was stuff I just got to draw as well. That there wasn't. A lot of concept art for the back so okay so this this these legs you're talking about the, how these legs are so strange here this and I, I 
honestly, this is not something I don't think I've ever really paid that much attention to. But if we look at these legs, I, we've seen the chicken legs before, or the bird legs before in the game, but maybe not quite like that. The is that what, what, which part about these legs is causing the issue? Part of it is um, mechs with triple joint legs don't work very well with our um, mech rig, and it's you know one rig that we use for all the mechs, not custom animation every single time because that would take even longer um so sometimes it's like there are things that we try and this mech was a lot of trying to figure out how to make it work and, and i sat there with the, the animator and looking at some of the things that weren't working and it's like no we can't do these we had to make concessions with it to get it to work so i, I would have liked for it to do a bunch of other things but that wasn't that wasn't possible okay. Well, I, I, okay, I, I had a conversation with Bombadil and Chris Lowry from PGI uh, a few weeks ago when I, when I was visiting California. I, 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 I told them in the conversation that, you know, I always see things that I think could be improved, think, things that I think could change in the game, but I'm not a, a game developer. I'm not a coder. I wouldn't begin to know the first place w w with which to correct, you know, issues that I see within the game. You, you, you work with the coders. You're a 3D modeler. Sometimes it's not as easy as some people make it out to be, is it? No, it never is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, and this is a thing with making stuff on budget and on time is that sometimes you cannot make uh, a really happy, shiny version of something anywhere, ever, under any circumstance. It's like it, uh, the Golden Triangle, cheap, fast, good. Pick two. Right. All right. That, that, that's what it, it all, everything comes down to that. You can never have all three. And so, you know, when we make stuff under deadlines and, you know, like the, the animation rig, when it was made five years ago now, well, they, they didn't envision all the things we would try to do with it. Uh, the Huntsman was actually the first time we actually had proper uh, three uh, joint legs working. And I had to I had to ask people really nicely to work on that for me. Because I was very insistent on it. Um, and then uh, some of the other mechs that look like they have three joint legs might not. And it's easier that way. Okay. Well, it. I don't know. I guess when talk when I was talking with Chris and Darren, it was one of those. I guess it was one of those things that. I, I know. I don't even know where I'm going with that. I, I know. I know what I want to say, but I don't want to say anything that might make them look bad because that wasn't the way it looked, or anything at all. Uh, I just. I guess it's just that that there are there are back backseat devs. I guess in every game, there's always somebody who says that they can do things better, etc. But I think a lot of these people have never worked in the video game industry. I certainly I haven't, and don't know how hard something can be to make it exactly right. And so I, I have found that to be very true. Sometimes it's like, and, and the other thing is is lots of things that go on that we don't talk about are reasons behind why something doesn't happen. It's like, you know, I, I got to be in the position where it's like, I can ask Paul about design decisions. I'm like, why didn't we do this? And he's like, this is why, this is why, this is why, and this is why. And I'm like, oh yeah, three of those four things are things we're never going to publicly speak about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <All> right. okay. <laughs> so it's like, sometimes it's like, no, we can't do it. And it sucks and can't talk about the reasons either which sucks more well the, the answer is reasons yeah reasons all right well when 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 you when you're done making one of these mechs and it's it, it's it's in the patch it's in the game we're playing it like when i got my viper when i got my vipers bombadil gave me all those by the way uh, I have the Vipers in hand. I'm playing with the jump jets. 
how much time do you spend in the game? Not not in a test server or anything else, but in the actual game playing the mech that you just designed. Uh, for the Viper, the Supernova, the Huntsman, uh, I played exclusively with those mechs for those for the month after it came out. So anytime I was playing, so I, I probably put in like at least 50 games each with all of those. Uh, the ones afterwards, uh, a little less, but no, I usually go play a bunch of games with them when they come out. The okay. the hunts or the sorry the Uziel I've probably only put like four or five games in right right now. Okay, here's this is gonna be an interesting question. I just thought of this. Out of all the mechs that you've designed, the ones that you had a, a very strong presence on, and have played, which ones did you did you not like, but the community said was awesome? that ever happened <sighs> what mechs of mine don't i like uh like did you not like the play style of or didn't do well in it has there ever been one that you designed that you didn't like but the community thought i'm was, was i'm not great. great with lights so um i had a slow start with the viper we'll say that uh, i've gotten a lot better with it i like the just uh double er large uh viper is pretty good for me um with the assassin, I started getting better at moving quickly and just SRMing people and using lasers. I, I went into the MRBC one-on-one -on -one tournament last year, last summer, and I got wrecked. But oh. they, they wanted the, the the test version of it, where they were just running a test event to see that it worked. What what weight class is the assassin? Is that a lot? It's also forty tons, so it's a medium. Medium, inner sphere or clan? Yeah. I guess. I don't own that mech. It appears not. I own 323 mechs, but I don't own the assassin. What do you What do you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was gonna try to pull that up for you, but I don't own those. It's okay. What? All right. So, what do you uh, you want to? Before we uh, move this conversation on, you want to do a giveaway real quick? Who, me? Yeah. Do you want to do a giveaway? You want to give? You want to give the guys watching a little, a little something, something? Okay. Because I, I was like, I don't have anything to give away. Uh, I, you have I, fun? Yeah, I've got stuff to give away. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, let's do one. Ba Bombadil, Bombadil gives me codes every once in a while. Yeah, uh, he's pretty cool that way. Let me, uh, let me pull up my codes here and see what I've got. We're gonna go to let's see, MWO stuff. Oh wait, I can go back to that screen. I was at. I think I got it right here. Uh, I know I'm getting low on codes. I I don't know if you heard, but on my stream a few days ago, Darren gave me a bunch of 24-hour premium time codes, and I was showing something else on my screen, and then I switched tabs to go to my codes, and I ended up showing all of my 24-hour premium time codes on stream. <laughs> yeah. Pro, pro streamer move, man, let me tell you. But I did, they did not see the 1,000 MC codes. So what we'll do here, we're going to give away 1,000 MC. This is 1,000 MechWarrior credits for people who play the game MechWarrior Online. And we're going to... The way you're going to be able to enter this... Let's see. Okay, if you want 1,000 MC... You need to type hashtag, and you can see where the conversation is quickly going to start going here. But if you want a thousand MC, you need to type hashtag SG1 in the Twitch chat right now. Hashtag SG1. Not SGU, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag SG1, because you did do some work for SG1, right? I worked on both of them. Both of them? Yeah. We, we can get into that more later. Okay. What, well, do you want to keep talking mechs before we go yeah, there? Yeah, we can, can keep talking mechs. Okay. All right. So I don't have the assassin. What do you say we look at the supernova? What, what? Uh, no, the next one is... Oh, yeah, the supernova is next. Well, 
Well, which, which one do you want to talk about? You designed them. Which one I, do you want to? No, talk no, about? I, I'm going back in order. The, the, the okay. assassin was out of order. <laughs> well, Supernova well, was next. I don't, but I don't know your order though. I okay. <laughs> Supernova is the next one on the list. Okay. So, Supernova was what I did next. I'm gonna pull up the hero. Big, again. slow, way too hot. <laughs> but fun. I mean, especially after. New skill tree, new skill tree, or not new skill tree. New Civil War tech has really changed a lot of these. And if you, oh, oh, you mentioned, you mentioned Tron Legacy a little while ago. Do you see what I've got on the screen here? Uh, not, not yet. <laughs> It'll come up in a moment and then I'll see it. Oh, oh, I see you're talking about the, the really cool version of the boiler where you get the highlights going. Yeah, yeah I like I like when next do that. I, I could, uh, if I did this, well, Tron was blue and red, right? Yeah, it was blue and red. So uh, if I just change yeah, this it was a... one color, I think that's too dark. There we go. That's more Tron right there. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting very, uh, don't have the right yeah there we go that's good yep that works okay so how, how long how long did, how long did this red, take you red red I, again uh, most of them we get about seven weeks to to put mechs together so that that doesn't actually change much how how dark is the red at tron i don't really remember uh, no they have like an orange but everything else is usually just black so very dark gray as batman would say all right. Well, when l let me pull up one of the uh, straight, and I, I don't think I, yeah, I didn't I didn't outfit all of these with paint yet. That's Wait. okay. Oh yeah, go back to that the second one there. Which one? Whichever one was the second one in your list. Oh yeah, all those missiles. Go. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on the A right now. Yeah, all those missiles. Okay. And That's then cool. the the boiler has the, the third missile hard point, so you can even put a third thing of missiles on it. Yeah, but I probably don't. I probably don't have that. Just a no. just a quick hunch. Yeah, that's. Well, no, the the boiler's the one with the colors you were just on. Oh, th wait. No, I'm on yeah. the boiler right now. Yeah, no, no, you can put three huge things and missiles on there. You can put an LRM-15 on top of a pair of LRM-20. Shush, shush, don't give people those ideas. <laughs> 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 All right, let's and, and experimenting with it, I had actually made uh, a missile hard point kind of a, a, underneath the torso. On, on the boiler, you can actually see the SRMs are still below. Okay, uh, whereas the LRMs I'm, are up on top. I'm on the boiler right now. It's not an Omni mech. I only have the three missile hard points in the one in the left torso. Yeah, and you can strip strip it and put three LRM 15s in there. Only for you, Mark. You realize I'm in the 228. <laughs> this is against our religion, right? <laughs> this is the price of talking to me. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Actually, I I, 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 okay, I, we need to, we need to revisit this conversation a little bit because while I am not a fan of Lerms and most people in the 228 are not fan of Lerms, I, what I am a fan of is people having fun playing the game. And exactly. if, if people are having fun, if, if people take a, a perfectly good assault, that's really good for tanking armor and using direct fire weapons. And they decide they want to put Lerms on it and hang out in the back. But they have fun with that. As long as they're having fun, that's the part that matters. And yeah. It's, 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 and it, it's, it's, there's it's, it's also, a game. there's the difference between having fun and um, actually sharing your armor with your team. If you're an assault mech and you're hiding back and you never get a single shot at you until the very end of the game when everyone else is dead, yeah, maybe you're not actually contributing everything you should. And that's fine. Um, I like to play with LRMs. Uh, I feel that they're effective as a team weapon, but solo they're a lot less effective. And at the same time, you should share your armor with your team and you should still bring something else party, you know, 
have some other guns so you can defend yourself against someone who shows up. All right, let's. I'm gonna finish building this out here with your with your lerms, with your lerms. That's all right, but we're gonna do we're gonna build something that can still be hopefully be a little bit deadly. I just actually took mine today and got rid of the streaks and put ATMs. Oh, this thing would need ammo. Three tons for three learn 15. That's all we need, right? We don't need any more than that. <laughs> no. We'll do that. So I'm at 67.5 out of 90 tons. I got the biggest engine in it that I can take. Oh, but this thing could do jump jets. We got to put some jump jets in there. We put those in the yes. side torsos for crit padding. Um, and I'll put, I'll put a couple more. Uh, actually, you know, I'm gonna put that over there. I'm just gonna have those two jump jets in it. We'll put a heat sink right here. Okay, I filled it all up and I still have a lot of tonnage left. So this is obviously where we go with the standard engine, right? How did you, how did you build yours with the lerms? Uh, ah. where is my... Oh, I think we I got gotta, it. I gotta, I gotta find it. Uh, I have four LRM-20s and Artemis on my Supernova A, right? I'm in that, I'm in that boiler you were talking about. And I got, I got no, I... Per perfect, perfect 90 tons, three heavy larges, three LRM-15s with Artemis. But mine's got three ATM-3s on it right now, and some oh. Gauss rifles. Gauss. Alrighty then. And uh, a large pulse laser. Well, at a minimum, we're gonna take a look at this thing. Yeah, just take a look at it. It's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll spend the I'll spend the money on it because I'll probably use all this stuff later. It's the lerms. I spent more money on the lerms than I did anything else. Oops. Oh, I've seen it now. Yeah. See, lots of missiles. <laughs> so what was the hard part there? I mean, is it just trying to? Figure out where to fit them all? Trying to figure out where to put a whole bunch of missiles on something without really increasing the silhouette. Like, you know, I, I get, you know, uh, the Timberwolf and uh, the Mad Cat Mark II both suffer from having these giant ears on top of the mech that really affect your side torso hitbox. We know that that happens. We know people don't enjoy it when someone hits this box sticking off your mech and suddenly your side's gone. So, you know, trying to make sure that there's space on the mech for these things, make sure you can read that it's there and also not really right. uh, give make a, the a, mech. Yeah, give a big bullseye that's easy to hit from across the map. Exactly. Oh, I get that. All right, let's take a look at the giveaway here. See how many people have entered. We got 22 people entered in to win 1,000 MC. Again, the code is hashtag SG1. We're going to give you guys about 30 more seconds to enter in this giveaway. And then Mark and I are going to hand somebody a code for 1,000 MC. So hashtag SG1. All right, which, which one of the supernovas is your favorite? Um, I the A with the missiles. <laughs> 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 yeah, you did that. You did that. You you, you walked into that one. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Again, though, and, you, and, but again, and to be fair, I I actually prefer playing with the Marauder 2C over the Supernova. <laughs> well, have you played have you played with the Mad Cat 2 yet? I think I dropped it at once, maybe. Can I can I show you something here? Uh, I, assuming I'm assuming as a PGI employee you get all the mechs right uh if i remember to ask for them yeah <laughs> okay so the scorch let's take a look at the marauder 2c scorch just want to show this to you yep the meta build two lb20x's four srm6's or four srm4's correct Do you know that build i i was unaware that that's what people were doing with it and it sounds awesome i want to do that now that's that's the meta but now let's take a look at the, the mad cat 2 because, okay, this is the Scorch. Let me go back to the Scorch real quick. People who are doing the free-to-play game mode are not going to spend money to get the Scorch, right? So, yeah. so that was, that's been a, a, a complaint by some people for a while now. 
I really want a Scorch. I want to do that loadout on a Scorch, but I can't do it because I'm not spending money. I can't afford to spend money on the game. So, the Mad Cat 2. Who, who did the Mad Cat 2? Uh, another mech artist. Okay, <laughs> we'll go with I, that. I don't want to. I don't want to name him if he doesn't want to be named for okay, it. Okay, that makes sense. That, that's not. That's not my place. All right. Well, I respect that. Mad Cat 2. Four SRM fours, two LB twenty Xs. This is the Mad Cat Two Dash Two. So for somebody who doesn't want, doesn't want, because I mean, you brought you brought the Marauder Two Cs. Just wanted to bring this up real quick for somebody who doesn't want to spend the money on a hero mech. What the Mad Cat Two Dash Two will eventually come out for C builds. They can do the exact same meta build that's on the Scorch. They can do it with the, Mar the Mad Cat Two Dash Two. Quick hint. Yes. Quick hint. Which which Marauder is the one that you're playing? Uh, which, which Marauders? The the D with the ECM. And which one are you? What uh? What do you have loaded on yours? Uh, a pair of Gauss rifles, an ERPPC, and some Streak fours to deal with light max. Ah. Okay. Because I, I had. The, was doing well in it had a game where this locust was just ending me because it's it only goes 60 it's not fast it doesn't turn much and i'm like i can't hit this guy i had someone come help me which is why i even lived but it was like i need to do something about that so i, I took off a chunk of the targeting computer and made some space elsewhere to put on a pair of streak fours and then, like, a couple matches later, I ran into this Mist Lynx who came after me, and he's all like, ah ha, ha I've got you, small pulse lasers and SRAMs in your face, There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm like, Jay, wham, <laughs> there goes your leg. Gauss rifles to your face, there goes the rest of you. Right. That, that felt really good. So, there, there's some Streak 4s on there just to deal with light mechs, and occasionally to hit harder when I went harder. Okay, uh, just just based off of that, you said two Gauss rifles, a PPC, two Streak fours. You use the Streak fours to deal with the lights. When I when I see a build like that, I'm thinking more closer to a lore build uh, with with the various combination of ranges: short range, long range, maybe even some mid range in there, depending on the mech. Did you ever play the tabletop game of BattleTech? Yeah, since I was eight and still do. Okay, so... Most of the people I played Battletech, uh, a lot of them are still friends of mine, and I, I get together with some of them a little less regularly now, but um, no, uh, a bunch of us are still playing. My older brothers got me into it in the very late 80s, early 90s, when it was pretty popular, and I played it almost every week until the like 2005 or so and then it, it, things just got busy and a few people moved away and uh then a couple of years later we started up again playing monthly and again things have been getting busy where even monthly is getting hard for some of us oh, look at that. i i mean I'm, I'm listening to the builds that you do and and the uh... Maybe maybe I'm too jaded. Maybe I was I spent too much time in the competitive scene. But when I see when I hear builds like 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 your Mad Cat 2C D build, that to me speaks tabletop, speaks close closer to a lore no, type I'm build. Just, I'm playing and, to have fun, and yeah, at yeah. the same time, uh, part of it was that one has ECM. And, and then I worked with the hard points it had because I, I wanted a Gauss rifle sniper. That that was that was the goal. It was like have ECM, have a pair of Gauss rifles. Let's let's actually learn how to use these Gauss rifles with charge, because I wasn't a big fan of that. It and at the same time I understand why it happened. Can I share something really sad with you? Uh, and, and and the stream. What would, what would happen if I said no? Of course you can. Okay. I've been into the Battletech franchise since 1989 when I first discovered the original Mech Warrior game. 
and I played various yeah. iterations of the video game since 1989. I'm 43 years old, been into the Battletech franchise since 1989, and I've never once played the tabletop game. Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. So, all the well, hardcore Battletech you... fans now have something to give me grief about. <laughs> uh, no, we don't need to give you grief. We need to get you in front of a table. Okay, well, okay. The weekend of MechCon. What are you doing the Friday night before? I'm playing Battletech, apparently. If you want to. <laughs> I'll be landing in Vancouver sometime around 1.30 in the afternoon. And... Well, I know last year, uh, uh, I know that the the competitive teams and some of the tournament refs had a tour of the office uh, on on the Friday afternoon last year, but you know, we'll probably be able to do something. Okay. You want me to clear it with Russ? I'll, we'll I'll, figure something I'll, out I'll, later. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll ping Russ. He, he, he loves me. <laughs> oh. Paul, Paul too. Paul loves me. <laughs> no, Paul. Paul, I, I am certain of that. Uh, we'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and there's going to be Catalyst Game Labs is going to be at MechCon. They're going to have space for people to play BattleTech like last yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think they're going to have more space because they didn't have enough. That, and and, and, that, and that's that, that's something for the viewers here. Uh, I think. Do I have the MechCon? I have my. No, I have my MechCon or bus thing. Do we, do we have the logo for MechCon 2017? Okay, well let's just let him, let him know. Uh, December 9th in Vancouver, Canada. If 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 somehow you are not aware of this, if you're in the BattleTech and you are not aware of what's happening in Vancouver on December 9th, you're clearly living under a rock. And if you were living that far under a rock, I have no idea what you're doing watching my stream right now. But December 9th in Vancouver, MechCon, Hairbrain Schemes, Catalyst Games, PGI, the streamers, the competitive players, anybody who's anybody in the, in the Battletech MechWarrior universe is gonna be in Vancouver for MechCon. And you can get all the information at the Mech Warrior online website, mwmercs.com. Highly suggest take a look at that if you're if you are as big of a mech geek as I am. I I had so much fun at MechCon. I no, I don't want to hear it, dude. I don't want to hear it because I watched that uh -oh. entire stream from beginning to end. And you have no idea how jealous I was that I could not be there. You have no I'm sorry idea. you weren't there. I'm... Um, yeah, but as someone who, like you, I really love this, and now I love it enough hey, that there, I work there now what can I as get well. There? No, that that event was amazing. I I loved it. it tons of fun. I'm really looking forward to this year. All right, let's do the giveaway real quick. I told the guys 30 seconds. Oh, whoa. Yeah, that's been ages ago. Right? Yeah, that really was. So we're going to do the giveaway real quick. This is for a 1,000 MC in MechWarrior Online. I'm going to give you guys 10 more seconds. Pound SG-1 right now. And we're going to get to the topic of SG-1 here soon enough. Pound SG-1 to win a 1,000 MC right now. you got about five seconds. Four Three, two, one, zero point seven five, zero point five. Oh, let's just do it. Just, just hit it. Just hit it. You're wasting that round. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even hype at this point. <laughs> All right, that, there she's spinning. Somebody is gonna walk away with a thousand MC. Who's it gonna be? I'm watching it on the stream, so I'm I'm delayed. Hey there, sexy. What can I, I get don't you? believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> okay. Ray's CD. Congratulations. I, I okay. I figured out the secret. And Mark, you probably don't realize this, but every time I have one of my big charity streams. 
and when I have the most viewers that I ever have on my stream, and I'm giving away something big, a mech pack. How, how, how often does he win? He wins. He w He's the one that wins. And I, it's only when I have more people <laughs> entered in one of my giveaways than I normally have. Raise CD with the win. Raised, I will get you that code. I'll send it to you. I'm going to send that to you probably on Discord. Mark, what do you say we take a, a quick five-minute bio break and then uh, come back to, come back for the interview? What do you think? Sounds good. All right. Let me get... up here the, the the intermission music from Monty Python on the Holy Grail it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be my my random MWO Battletech related videos all right everybody we're gonna take a quick five minute break use the restroom and we will be right back Oh, it's just me now. Hey, wait. Where's the... Okay, I got everything all kinds of weird right here because of the way I had to do Skype. <laughs> but we're getting it now. I'm getting it now. I think it... we got it. We're going to start off with a little George Ledoux for the break. What do you think? Duncan Fisher? Uh... That sounds great. Okay. Oh yeah, I I think is George coming back from MechCon? I don't know. I, you're asking me. Yeah, I I should find out because yeah. he was there last year and he was he's a pretty cool guy. He is. I really want to meet him in person too. I've talked to him many times via email and on various various voice communication thingies, but never have met him in person. I'd really love to do that. But anyways, okay, we'll be right back, everybody. Quick five minute break. Here, You know, it's not easy being the voice of Solaris. The crowds, the mech jocks, the girls, the less than savory characters. And in the middle of it all is Duncan Fisher, voice of the common man, bringing you all of the mech action I can shove through these two eyeballs. People ask me, Duncan, what's your secret? Well, folks, I suppose it's time to come clean. I don't do this because it's my job. I do it for you. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Duncan Fisher is a man of the people. And my people want bloody, violent, mech-on-mech -mech action 24-7. When I get up in the morning, with last night's hangover pounding away at my head, and pull on my pants, I do it because decency demands that I not walk to breakfast naked. Once again, I do it for you. And after a breakfast scotch or two... This announcer's voice of mine is ready to give you what you need. So what's my secret? Chronic alcoholism, by the sound of it. But that's how the business rolls on Solaris. So kids, next time you get to thinking that you want to be an announcer on Solaris 7, remember your old pal Duncan Fisher and send me a bottle or two. It might just get your foot in the door. This has been the Duncan Fisher Minute. Zwift! No, no, Zwift, Zwift! Don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friends, yeah. friends, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Oh. Let, let's go. Come on. Follow me. I will, I will show you something. Come on. Oh. Right. You see? Where's my team? Oh. They're gonna shoot you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry! Oh. Let's be honest. Okay, this is way too easy. Oh. Oh. Shot spotted! <laughs> We got faster, oh. didn't we? Oh, 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 there it is. We're flying. Oh, oh my god, no! No, 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 no! What? What? Oh my god. Get Zoe. Get Zoe. We are totally flying. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, where am I going? I'm going into enemy territory, Paul. No. Somebody help. Paul, I'm going to, like, the end of this the is, world. This is messed up. <laughs> this is really messed up. This is a flying dive war front over there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Let's go! Too many! Oh, my god, he's in the tree. He's in the tree. Which he must tree? Be in the tree. I don't know. 
<gasps> he's up there. He's in the tree. He's no, like the I predator. <laughs> I'm scared. He's like a tiger. Pounce. I see you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Beef, are you hiding? Yes, I am. <laughs> he's really shut down somewhere. In a tree. Is he in a tree? Hello, Hi, someone. everyone. Get him! Hello. Get beef! No, you won't. I am a carnivore. You got this beef. What? Oh shit! Yeah! yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh! Yes! No! Oh! I'm gonna die any Come on! Oh! Oh! Look at that! Boom! Look at that slow roll! Hello! Maybe don't poke on that thing. Uh oh! Oh shit! Goodbye! Hey! Come back here, beef! No! Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, okay. Turn around and shoot him. Oh my god. Oh, shit. Really? <laughs> no! <laughs> yes. This really? is not fair! This is not fair! <laughs> here we go, here we go. Ah! Oh my god. No! I'm not dead, I'm not dead, okay. You got it, Beef. Are you still alive? Override. Oh! Oh no. <laughs> No more speed, let's go! Oh! oh. oh <laughs> yes! <laughs> I, I got uh -oh, this, I got uh -oh, this. Uh -oh. <gasps> no! no. Prepare to die! Hey there, sexy. What can I get for you? So oh. damn bad in slow move. Don't twist away from me. Face me! <laughs> <laughs> Don't twist Face away Face the storm! Destroy. Oh. 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 Only Zoof kills Zoof beef. Oh no, I bought that. Hello again, mech fans. Duncan Fisher here. People tell me, Duncan, you're the only announcer I care to hear. Nobody brings me into the mech action like you do. Why, I even sexy. read about mech matches you? with your voice in my head. Well, that's flattering to hear. It takes years, decades, to cultivate a fan base like mine. You know, back when I was a mech jock, people loved me when I won and hated me when I didn't. During that time, I learned an important life lesson that I want to share with you, my loyal fans. Life is all about winning. If you're not winning, you're not anybody. Once I figured that out, I knew what I had to do. No, not sabotage my opponent's mechs, though that wouldn't have been a bad idea. No, my path to glory was one of a greater calling. I set out to become the voice of Solaris 7. And today, despite all the scandals and investigations into my questionable ethical behavior, I'm at the top. No matter which mech jock wins the match, I am. Duncan Fisher is always in the winner's circle. So there you have it, folks. Win above all else, and nobody cares how you played the game. This has been the Duncan Fisher Minute. The Duncan Fisher Minute is written by David Martin, produced and performed by George Ledoux and Voices in My Head Productions, based on characters created by Ferret Bodwin and George Ledoux. Any similarity to persons living or dead is ridiculous. Microphone. Need a it's microphone. So okay, kids, we are back. We we are back. That was the Duncan Fisher Minute. Well, actually, uh, that was a Duncan Fisher Minute, followed by a beef video, followed by another Duncan Fisher Minute. Uh, two very notable people in the Battletech MechWarrior universe. Uh, Duncan Fisher is actually a fictional character that we saw in the video game MechWarrior 4 Mercenaries, I believe. Is that right, Mark? You remember? Do you know? I... Uh... I don't it, think it, I played it, Mercenaries. It was it was one of the Mech Warrior Four games. I, I'm, yeah, I'm drawing, he, he I'm was the arena. Yeah, he was the arena announcer. In yes, the 
my four year four. Right. And Duncan Fisher, it, it, again, fictional character, the voiceover was done by George Ledoux. George, yes. George Ledoux is some something of a hero, uh, an icon, uh, a superstar in the Battletech universe because of not only that voice, but other voices he has also done for for various me or Battletech related games. He was at MechCon last year. Uh, if you've ever seen my Bass and Bot show, I have a special intro that I've done for that. He did he did the voiceover work for that. Uh, other streamers, uh, Infamous Impaler, Father Bill, he's done voiceover work for them. He loves doing work for the the Mech Warrior slash Battletech community. So if you're not familiar with George Ledoux, uh, look him up. Look up Duncan Fisher. Look up George Ledoux on YouTube. Look him up on Google. Very, very nice guy. Does some amazing voices. Uh, we're really happy to have him in this Battletech community that we have here. Just a phenomenal no, he's guy. He's really cool. He's been doing a lot of neat stuff on his own. And I'm, I had a chance to meet him at MechCon. He was pretty cool. By the end of the night, his voice was, you know. Gone? It was getting a bit rough. It was a, getting a bit rough on him later on in the evening. Yeah. Sure. I, I mean, I understand, you know, he can only do that for so long. All right. Well, uh, Mark. Oops, what did I do here? Okay. I don't know. I, I, I got a question for you. Uh, Darren is sending me messages on Discord. You know, of course, being the guy that's running the stream here, I'm, I'm trying to monitor. You've seen my streaming rig before, haven't you? I, I, I have seen a picture of it, yes. Okay. Well, I try to monitor everything at once here. I'm monitoring the Twitch chat. I'm monitoring uh, your video to make sure it's still working. Uh, Discord, OBS, all the servers at the same time, so I can't always get to everything in a timely manner. But when we were getting ready to do the giveaway, Darren said that we could give away a mech pack. Uh, yeah. He said it can be a standard pack plus hero and reinforcements of one of the mechs that you designed. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, it's it's a it's a Mark Nicholson no, it makes, themed stream. It makes perfect sense. So, out of all the mechs that you designed, which one is your absolute favorite? Yeah, which one do I have to? Yeah, just put the pressure on me now. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah, hell yeah, that's going on. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, out of all the mechs that, wait, did did you do? There's a new, there's a, not a new mech. It's not new, new. It's within the last year. The Bushwhacker. Did you make the Bushwhacker? I did not. Okay. I thought you did for some reason. Nope. That was somebody else. Well, out of I, all... I'll, I'll, I'll list them off again. Viper, Huntsman, Supernova, Assassin, Javelin, Uziel, and then the upcoming Osiris and Nova Cat. All right. I think it has to be a mech that's currently in game. Yes, so, I I'd figured that too. Um, I'd feel bad giving someone a mech they don't get for a couple months. That that doesn't sound fun. Um, uh, okay, so well, I'll tell you, you you pick the mech. I, I spectral fire in Twitch chat. Uh, a couple people are saying New Zeal. A lot I guess of people in chat. Yeah, I guess I guess it's because it's brand new. Darren saying, Darren's also. Yeah, he's ta he's taking the decision out of your hands, I guess. Like, it kind of is, and at the same time, it's the newest one, so yeah. we'll just go with that. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, let's do an Azeal. Let me pull up the uh, pull up the giveaway tool again, and we'll do this. What do you want the code word to be? Pound what? Oh. You want us to do Azeal? Uh, I can make, make it easy and just go Azeal. No, no, we gotta make it. We gotta make it fun. Okay. Uh. Uh. Hashtag. For Somerset Strikers. Like one S T or F I R S T. I'll I'll just type it in. But don't don't any of you. All right, so I'm gonna copy that. Don't type that in yet, cause it's not set yet. It's not set yet. And I might have gotten the spelling wrong on Somerset. 
Uh-oh. All right. Everybody, if you typed it in already, type it in again. We're going to give away a S -O -M -E -R. deal. S-O-M-E-R. I did get that wrong. All right, well, I copied and pasted it just like you put it in there. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, do it wrong then. Yeah, do it wrong. Do it wrong. Okay, and there's what we've got. If you already put it in, after Mark put it in, you have to redo it again because I didn't have it entered into the giveaway tool yet. If you don't see your name in the giveaway tool, it's not a 1,000 MC. It's, an, it's a used deal. Who wants... I should fix that. Who wants a UZ, uh, UZL pack? All right, if you don't see your name in that list, if you typed it in early and you don't see your name in that list, do it again. All right, we're gonna go back to the interview here. All right, so let me go back to my questions here. I knew, I knew our conversation would wander um, yeah. Okay, when... Hey there, sexy. <sighs> what can I get for you? Uh, MW Wolf, thanks you, thank you for the follow. Uh, when when you're designing any of these mechs, uh, it could be, I mean... It, it could be it could be the, the Viper, the Huntsman, the Supernova, uh, any of these mechs. Let's, let's, back, let's go back. I'm going to take a look at the Uziel again. Uziel. When you're designing any of these, what is something? I mean, is that like we know with the, the Uziel, you take away the missile hard point in the center. You had you had a big challenge there. But what is something that you find to be consistently challenging, no matter what mech you are working on? Uh, uh, making ball joints that work out of everything. It's like it, it doesn't have to just look cool. It doesn't have to look like Alex's art. It has to look like that. And move around and not break. Hey there, sexy. <laughs> what can I get for you? Um, and so some mechs are actually pretty easy. Uh, some mechs... Actually, it's hilarious, because the Osiris was super easy for this, and the Nova Cat I've had nothing but trouble, because it's got one Omnipod arm with one hand on it, so it has one lower arm actuator, so I'm like, I have to make the arms go side to side as well as up and down. Okay, wait a minute, wait, wait, and... wait, wait. Hold, hold on. I... Yeah, I I, I I think something just clicked in my head here. When you design these mechs, I I I'm gonna pull up one of the the drawings that you, well, not one of the drawings, one of the base ones. I'm gonna I've got the Viper. I'm gonna pull up the Viper. Yeah. Okay, so when I'm looking at this this base Viper, like you have up on the screen right now, you 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 did the 3D modeling for that. But then, yeah. but then, do you have to redo the 3D modeling with the arms in different positions, with the torso in different positions, with, like, in other words, all the animation positions that are going to happen in game? Do you no, no, no. What I have to do is make the model such that when you bend it, like you bend the leg, it doesn't crash through the other part of the upper leg or whatever. I just have to design it so that it doesn't look funny when it moves. <laughs> Someone else actually makes it move. That's what I thought, but... No, no. No, it, it's just like, you know, will this actually work? Or is there something in the way that will mean when you bend it, it's going to crash through, you know? It's like if you put a big, big roll cage on the inside of the knee and then bend the knee, it's going to smush through the roll cage. Things like that. Okay. And so uh, sometimes those small details aren't kind of planned out very well and then I have to kind of figure it out and, and that's where it starts getting difficult it's like I gotta make it look like it does while also making it work and making it work is easy when you don't have to also match exactly what it looks like trying to do both becomes a little difficult and, and that's I find that's one of the more difficult parts of building a mech is trying to do both of those at the same time um and then okay. uh, the the other thing is usually at the end just managing all of the pieces. I've got like 200 weapons and a bunch of extra parts, and just making sure they're all named and labeled and in the right spot. 
Okay, so you do have to design all the weapons that go on it too. Like, like not, oh, yeah. not just not just the missile tubes, but like I'm looking at the Uzeal right now, the hero with the PPCs on it. If I go, if I go to the mech lab, and I take off these PPCs. Yeah. And I, no, and, I and I add on just small lasers. Yes. What, what, I, I'm, I, what, what I'm looking at here now is also your design then. Right? Hey. Yeah. Okay. And I had to plan out where a lot of these things went and, and how they went there and what parts go with them. And it's like, oh, there's the laser. There might be another piece of geometry with it. Like that whole box underneath is, is you know, a part that has to attach to the laser. Um, you know, there's uh, aspects of it that are about building the game, like uh, how we do hit detection and... Uh, some other parts of it that I, I have to add in as well, but they're fairly minor. They're, they're not difficult to do. They just there's more work than that as well. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Boring I, technical I, I, stuff. I, I personally know nothing about this stuff. I've done. I, I've I've edited some stuff in Photoshop and things like I'm, that. But it's... I I don't know a lot about how it works. I just have our technical artist, who's really amazing, come over and say, "Here's what you need to do. You need to add this. Here's a tool for it." You need to add this. It looks just like this. Go do those things. And it's like, okay, we'll do those things. Well, okay, so... And then it, it, if it doesn't break, I'm happy. How did you get started in 3D modeling? What, what, what... I mean, I, I know you drew... You said you drew mechs. You, you'd stay in and not go outside I, when you I were a kid. I started 3D modeling when I was, like, 12. One of my older brothers, uh, again, one of the ones who got me into Battletech, he was taking a drafting course. And so he got some software for his home computer from the drafting course, and one of them was a, an early version of 3D Studio. And so I, I got in there and started drawing 3D stuff at a fairly young age and did not stop. I, I figured out pretty quickly that was something I wanted to spend a lot of time doing. I, again, you know, when you're 12, how often would you picture a 12-year-old sitting there for five hours drawing in 3D on a computer without stopping. Well, I mean, I, I guess for me in the world I grew up in, I, I can picture that. Because I, I spent I spent hours upon hours building my, my original dial-up bulletin boards in the in the late eighties and early nineties with and yeah. making making the ANSI art and everything that to go on there. My my eldest son Currently in his senior year of college, doing electrical engineering and computer science, at 10 years old, he was he was coding, and just spent hours and hours doing it. So I guess it exactly I, I, for, for us for us geeks, for those of us that, that love this stuff, I guess it's not so hard to imagine. But if I was to go to some of my coworkers and be like, oh yeah, yeah, the guy I interviewed the other night, he's at 12 years old, he'd spend hours and hours doing 3D modeling and be like, why, why would somebody do that? But I, but, I, but I understand because it. I love doing yeah, it because so you have a much. Pa- yeah, because you have a passion for it, and that's that's what makes all the difference, right there. Yeah, well, and uh, this job is tons of fun because I get to do two of my passions at the same time, which is 3D modeling and BattleTech, all day long, and I feel incredibly lucky about that. So that was that was one of the questions I originally wrote out to you. Where is that list? I yeah. have them somewhere. Uh, let's see. You're doing Green Five. You're doing Hento. Okay. How much? How much do you play MWO? What other games do you enjoy playing? Was one of the questions I originally read up for you. But when I, I guess, the question that I originally sent you, how much do you play MWO? What other games do you enjoy playing? You don't play MWO probably as much as you'd want to. But you do, you are a big fan, have been, of the Battletech universe. You've, expl- you've said this uh, numerous times in the interview already. So that's that, That's something I think we know about a lot or several of the, the, PGI, the PGI devs. Russ has even said that on numerous occasions, that he's been a fan of the Battletech universe for many years. So that, that yeah. you've, co- you've covered no, that I- question a couple of times there. At one point, someone did ask how often we play, and I checked, and uh, in the first 15 months of my dev account, I averaged 100 games a month. Now, now, 
I was dropping so. with I was dropping with Darren the other day. The other yeah. day, meaning last week or something. We were on Star Wolf stream or somebody else's. Maybe he was busy in my stream. I don't remember. It happens a lot. Um, and somebody asked because we several of us have the devs on our friends list and somebody asked how come they never see the devs playing the game and I had heard this a long time ago and I said it on stream and then Darren confirmed it most of the devs maybe not all of them because I don't have that this is not something I have confirmed but many of the devs have alternate accounts that they also play with that are not tied to PGI specifically so several yes. several devs play the game probably a lot more than we realize under alternate accounts. Um, yes. Uh, the first, uh, the developer who hit tier one first, because I did it second. No, you will not know that he is a developer, and you, you he doesn't. Uh, he's not public about it. Um, a lot of our QA guys are really good. Uh, they, I think last year, a year and a half ago, they kind of made a bit of a push to make sure that they were all actually really good at the game. Um, and then, yeah, no, I know several other people who play on accounts where they just, you wouldn't know, because they want to play without having to interact with people all the time. That does change the experience. Okay, so viewers this is something that you should know and spread around please spread this around because if you're in one of those games where you have that one guy on VoIP or in all chat who's being a total I'll say jerk just to keep it more polite right now but just being a being a total jerk it's it's obvious that there are many of the devs are dropping in this game, playing this game, doing drops in this game with alternate accounts that we'll never know. So chances are those people who are being consistent jerks, game after game after game, day after day, week after week, they're going to get spotted at some point. Am I, am, am uh, I is that pretty? Th that cool may thing? happen, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, there are some developers who just it's not their thing, and so they don't play it all the time. Uh, I know one of our developers, it, it's totally not the kind of game he likes. He's played it once. Okay. He, he did he, he did one live drop, and that was, that was enough for him. It's like, okay, that's it. At the same time, he still pays a lot of attention to what's going on, and he still knows what is going on and, and what his role is, and he's able to do his job just fine. Well, I mean, his whole livelihood depends on his being able to pay attention and do all that. So I would think, I mean, I, I don't know. A common sense dictates if, if your paychecks are being signed by a guy who's, who's, or by people who are judging the quality of the work you're doing and the work you're doing is shit, you're probably not gonna get a paycheck very much longer. Call it a hunch. I no, he is he is very good at what he yeah. does, and it, it's fine. Yeah, I would I would I would think and, so. I would think so. And at the same time, you know, we'll do like in, internal map testing or, or things like that, where we actually do uh, occasionally we'll do like new map testing where we actually need twenty four people in seats. And yeah, he comes over and plays those. All right. Sure. So you know, he's not he's not afraid to play it as a whole. He just doesn't like playing online with people. I have a bunch of friends who don't play this game even though they like Battletech just because they don't want to play PvP. And and that's fine. Well, and and on that well this is gonna bring me full circle to the Battletech, the new Battletech game from Hairbrain Schemes. Yes. I have played that game twenty or thirty times doll. I I I don't know. I, I for me personally, and this is just a personal thing. Maybe I'll maybe I'll feel different about it once once player versus player is introduced. But the and maybe it's also because I didn't I've never played the tabletop game, but I struggled with the turn-based concept of the game and it it's taken me 
for, so, for someone like me who's been playing Mech Warrior games since 1989, I have struggled very hard with the BattleTech game and the basic concepts behind that. I could see people like, like, uh, you know, some of the devs who don't like maybe PvP really grasping onto the the turn based versus the AI thing of BattleTech. Is that is that? Yeah. No. And yeah, some people just don't like PvP. Um, in in general, you'll find things with PvP environments where the reality is is you're going to be on on the internet with a bunch of people. Sometimes that's not the most most healthy environment. <laughs> that happens. You know, I play LOL occasionally, and uh, I I prefer to play with friends as opposed to with random people for reasons. Did you say Did you say WoW? LOL. LOL. Which one? Le what? League of Legends. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I used to play WoW a bunch, but yeah, again, you know, sometimes the environment can be a little toxic. Well, you made you and, made a WoW. And that's reference. not fun. You made a WoW reference in my in my Reddit post there, so. I, I, oh yeah, we're gonna talk about Black Temple. Oh we, no, we're not. Yeah, um, <laughs> I love that shield that you can get in there with all the spikes on it, the car door. That's my favorite Paladin shield. Do you remember? Here we go. We've remember, talked about Black Temple. Do you remember? Do you remember Four Decisions? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere he is laughing his ass off right now. That was a big topic on Teamspeak when I saw your comment. So he started reading about Black Temple, and he was reading me the the Gamepedia page from it, and I was like, "Stop! Stop! I don't want to hear about WoW." But that's well, all right. You're, you're saying he knew you weren't prepared for it. He he knows I don't like it, so he you know he's just, oh. that, that's poor. He's just picking on me. That's that's. That's his thing. It's, it's all it's all good though. You are a WoW player, and you. So wait, did you do work on Black Temple? No, no, I I just played that game. Oh, okay. I thought you brought that up because you did work on that. Okay. No, no, no. Is is Mech Warrior Online the only video game that you've done work on, or have you done work on other video games? Uh, many years ago, I worked at Next Level Games on a game that did not get released. Okay. Unfortunately. So uh, th that game was partway through production, and then they decided to cancel it for reasons. Again, I can't talk about reasons. That's all right. Um, and uh, yeah, so they, they let a bunch of people go, and that was it. Uh, all right. Still well, good people. Uh, it was fun. OK, so MechWarrior Online, PGI, this is your first this is your first real professional game development gig, then. Sorta. Sorta. Well, the next level games, but first, okay, first published game. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Two years now. Do you want to? Well, let, actually, before we make that transition, let's. Let's do let's do the giveaway for the Zeal package. What do you say? Oh yeah, they've been still been waiting for that. Well yeah, I make them wait. I, I I keep I keep them on the hook for a little bit. I keep them on the hook. All right, uh, let me get a copy of this right here. We're gonna give you guys. We're gonna give you guys uh, about thirty more seconds to enter into the giveaway. We are gonna give away. We're gonna give away. Well, Darren is gonna is gonna inject into somebody's account sometime tonight or early tomorrow a Uzeal standard package plus hero plus reinforcement. So basically the the whole package. If you just have to type exclamation point first Somerset Strikers, it is misspelled because I copied that originally from from Mark. Yeah, but so, sorry about that, guys. No, 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 I just I hit it quickly. I I'm the world's worst speller, so I would have I would have misspelled it wrong as well. So if, if you want in on this giveaway, we're going to put the giveaway screen up right now. We've got just about 29 people registered right now. If you play MechWarrior Online, why is nobody else's name showing up here? I'm not. I see people entering, but I don't see the names appearing. Let me uh -oh. look. Gimpy U5. Yeah, people are giving it the exclamation mark instead of the. Oh, hashtag. Counsel. It's hashtag. Okay, so let's look for Hunting Putin. Make sure he's in there. I don't 
be hunting people. The names are coming back in. Oh, so somebody's doing it right. He, he, he just put it on now, so. Okay. All right. All right, so five more seconds for... Wait, hold on a second. Four, three, two, one... All right, use the old mech pack. Standard hero reinforcements. What is that? Seven mechs, Mark? Oh my god. Uh, I think it's six, because it does, that doesn't have the collectors. I, all right, well, who's it going to? The Shield Legacy. The, the Shield. The She Legacy. All right, congratulations, the She Legacy. Da Daishi. Daishi. Oh yeah, you're right. All right. See, I can't even read it's, right, it's let alone the, spell the, right. It's the uh, the other name for the um, direwolf. Yes, it is. All right, uh, the She Legacy. What I need you to do, if you would, please send me a whisper on Twitch. Send me a whisper with your in-game username. Yeah, Vlad. RJ vs. Names. Terrible. I can't. I don't do names. But that she legacy, uh, send me a whisper with your in-game username. <clears throat> I'll get that forwarded off to Darren, and sometime either tonight or tomorrow, he'll get that injected into your account. Congratulations on that, sir. Congratulations. Enjoy. All right. So before you are a game developer, although aspiring to be one, you worked in the TV and film industry. And yes. I don't know about I don't know about everybody else uh in chat right now, but I I absolutely love the Stargate TV series. I own all of SG1 on one of my media servers. My wife originally fell in love with me on a Sunday morning, watching the four hour block of Stargate on one of our local television channels. And she was a big Star Trek fan. I turned her on to Stargate. And one day, in, when we're just hanging out doing drops, you, you dropped the information on me that you used to design props for the Stargate series. And that blew yes. my mind. I used to build Stargates. It's the easiest way I describe it. <laughs> so, I mean, okay. First, okay. I gotta get. I gotta get a certain screen off here. I gotta get. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off, and we're gonna turn that on. That. Oh, wait, not that. That. No, that. That. And that. All right. Piranha Games, Battletech. I only put the Battletech logo up on the, the overlays because it is a possibility. I should really take it off. Eh, I really shouldn't be on nah. that. He, no. pl he plays Battletech. But yeah, I really, yeah. really should take that I've, off. I've already put about 20 hours into the, the beta for that game. But the potential is there for a mech that Mark designed to actually appear in the Battletech game. Potential. It, uh, could, it, it could if, happen. If they make more, it yeah. might happen. Oh, they'll make at more. At this point, it's, you know, uh, I've met those guys once or twice. They seem pretty cool. Well, hopefully we see some of your, some of your work in there. That would be that would be really cool. I, I think so, too. <laughs> All right. That'd be a lot of fun. Oh, I got the, I got the uh, whisper. All right, sir. I got your whisper. I'll make sure that we uh, that I get that information off to Darren, and uh, when he is done doing his things tonight or tomorrow, he will get that injected into your account. All right. SG One, did you work on it? Yes. Stargate Atlantis, I... did you work on it? Also true. Stargate Universe, did you work on it? it yes, also true. Okay. Uh, when I first got there, it was uh, SG-1 Season 10 and Atlantis Season 3 were what I worked on that first year. 
and then I worked on every Stargate thing that went on until the end of uh, the second season of SGU when it ended. Still disappointing. Still disappointing. Yeah, was... no, I... Yeah, I still feel emotions about that whole thing where that ended, and that was very sad. I, I, I... Was 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 Brad Wright one of the producers on that? Who he produ he produced SGU along with Atlantis and SG One, right? Yeah, no, no, he was he was still there. Him and Robert Cooper were still uh, at the top. Okay, uh, creating that. Because I I I really liked SGU. I thought that it was. I mean, because at, well, at at the time when SGU came out. We were just coming off of Battlestar Galactica, or maybe it was still, maybe Battlestar Galactica was still showing. Battlestar Galactica was this gritty, dark side. Yeah, it, it, had, it had just ended because yeah. uh, Caprica and SGU got canceled around the same time. And, and but SGU, by, well, by and, a lot of the same decisions. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and, and, and SGU just seemed to kind of follow along with that gritty, darker. Uh, uh, what it was was just after making SG-1 and Atlantis for 13 years, they were like we want to do something different. Like, like you know, when your job is making this thing for 13 years straight you are you just want to do a change. And and some people liked it less and some people liked it more. And, and some people just liked that it was different. I did. I thought it was a great series. But... I, I thought that it had a bunch of good moments early on and it also had some not good moments early on that once they got feedback about what was working and what wasn't it the second season markedly improved and yeah no it was getting really good up until the point where it ends yeah but i think that could be said for any of the stargate seasons though couldn't it they all went through their i mean sg1 certainly went through its ups and downs over the years things that worked things that didn't and then yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I, I don't know. I, there were there were certain parts of that series that I really really liked, and there were certain stories. And I just rewatched the first season of SG One all over again, and there were there are certain episodes that I once they once they came up in the autoplay, I just I instantly skipped over it, and went to the next episode. You know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a, a lot of shows take some time to to hit their stride. Um. I haven't watched the first two seasons of Atlantis, apart from the like the two-parters, and there's only one episode that I feel I need to actually go back and watch. Uh, the rest of it doesn't sound like it was worth watching. Okay, so if if we go beyond the 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 three different series, you did SG One starting season ten. Did you say all three seasons of Atlantis? Right. Uh, seasons three, four, and five. Yeah. Three, four, and five. Both seasons of SGU. And, and those two DVD movies. That's what I was just going to ask you. Did you do the DVD yeah. movies? Okay. It was it was all the same production. Well, as it, much it, as they were, they were different things, and most of it was all the same people working on everything at the same time. Because, like, when we shot... When we shot SG-1 and those movies, we were shooting Atlantis at the same time. We had two productions running simultaneously, which was a crazy amount of work. But it was also a lot of fun. Which which series did you spend the most time on? Uh, Hours-wise? Yeah. Which which one which one do you think you put in the most time? The time? Uh, I can't speak very well. <laughs> Which which um, the the first year I was there was the year I did the most hours. We just there was a lot of work to do, and then um, like once we moved to just doing universe, uh, we were only doing one show instead of two. That was that was obviously less busy. Um, yeah, no. Uh, over the five years, I literally had my hours just slowly start to return to normal. It, it was, uh, yeah. There was there was a lot of good times there, but it was also like we would work for eight months of the year or so, and it'd be like 50, 60 hour weeks the whole time. 
so when production started for SG-1, and, like, was there... SG, SGU didn't start until after SG-1 was completely done, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, the the fir first year I was there was, was season 10 and 3, then it was movies in 4, then it was uh, just Atlantis 5, and then it was SGU season 1, and then it was SGU season 2. So the last three years were just one show at a time. Okay, so your first year, did did SG-1 and Atlantis, did they start production at the same time, or were they kind of offset a little bit? Same time. Okay. And I got there just as, I, I think I got there like uh, just a couple of weeks before filming. So they were, I, I think they had trouble with an art director and had to get a new one. And so they had to redraw and rebuild a bunch of things. And so they were just, they were really busy. I got in there because they were, the prop people were trying to develop some 3D scanning tools to help them with something and they needed a modeler just to help them with stuff. And they were like, yeah, we just wanted someone in part time, but actually you know how to do some metalworking and woodworking and stuff. And we're super busy. We're just gonna bring you in. And, and that was how I got in there. Okay, well, we'll back up a second. All that time you spent doing 3D modeling on your brother's computer growing up, when did you find time for woodworking and metalworking? Um, the jobs I'd had. Okay. L like actual just work. Um, the woodworking was just working at a millworking place for a couple months. And uh, again, with the metalworking, I was uh, making rails for wheelchair elevators. So I, I knew my way around tools. I could not murder myself with them. And yeah, that's, uh, that's always a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and, and the ability to trust that someone isn't actually going to know how to use tools and I did so they were like yeah we'll just bring you in and just have you do stuff and uh, what what actually ended up happening was they got a, a laser cutter uh, a couple months later and they were like hey we just got this new tool figure out how it works so I did and I figured out that we could build tons of stuff with it fast like what? And, what, what, what what piece did you build for the Stargate series that you are most well it's that it's the most impressive it, let's put it that way a, a lot of it is just that like you just put in a piece of like um abs plastic or acrylic or wood and it's like you know a half inch thick or a quarter inch thick and you can cut out a 2d shape in it in just seconds or minutes which means that you don't have to hand mill all of these things all the time and so you know just panels and consoles and little acrylic chips that you could see through nonstop all day long and, and you could make them in in seconds well you know I'm, I'm looking at that bookshelf behind you right there yeah you got you got you got props or, or not maybe not props but but game pieces is there anything from the stargate sets on there uh, anything, anything, anything you made Actually, hilariously, the one thing I have on there is uh, a replica that uh, a fan sent me of this tablet thing. Let me bring it up. Um, do I have anything else? Oh, yeah, no, I have a chip here as well. Okay. Let me turn on a light. Okay, much brighter. So here is a little plastic chip of the kind that I'm talking about. Oh, like like we would see like when they were when they pull when they pull out a computer or something and they have exactly. to replace the slots. Yeah. Yeah. So like I designed this and at the same time I put a piece of acrylic in a laser cutter, hit print, and I have one of these in my hand again in like 20 30 seconds. Like oh, it, it was just so easy. But it's like, oh, you want to build a second one? Here, let me hit that button again. Um, so on Atlantis, on the set, they have this, on all the walls, they have these little columns with a bunch of little lights in them. And the, the kind of lens for the light, these little chevron shaped acrylic pieces. And when they originally built it, they, you know, had a team of guys like bandsawing this acrylic and then, you know, um, 
glazing it with a blowtorch to get it to have this smooth, polished edge. Well, you know, and... like they'd have to have the lights underneath that when it was on the screen, and it would just light up nice and shiny and everything. And... Oh, yeah. It's... Um. Anyway, so they had a team of people doing this, and then they came back and they're like, we need a bunch more a couple seasons later. And I'm like, okay, we can do that. And they're like, how long is it going to take you guys? I'm like, I, I got this. And I literally just hit print, and it would cut for an hour and a half and build a bunch of them. And it was like, oh, yeah, you need a 1,000? Yeah, it'll just take me three days of sitting there watching it go. Uh, did you guys have a 3D printer on set by any chance? Because I, I, know, I know that's now they're, they're cheap and inexpensive, but I can imagine movie studios having access to those things. Prop, prop, prop companies or special effects companies having access to those things years before we could buy one on Amazon. Yes, we we did get one, and it was not cheap, and it uh, was actually early enough along that it wasn't even that reliable. Um, but yeah, I, I did get to print a bunch of things on it. Uh, I even made a few custom uh, battle mechs on it. Like <laughs> uh, which which mechs did I, you make? I made uh, I'm. I grabbed a Thor from StarCraft 2. I actually just I files out of their game and, and made it print ready and printed one uh, so I could have that for a battle mech. Um, and then I made a th model of... Uh, when they released Battletech in Japan, they they drew some different designs for, for mechs, and you can find them on the internet, but uh, I built a 3D model of the Japanese version of the Panther. And, and printed that out uh, and made that. And so there's one of those, and I have it on my desk at work. Now, I can only imagine, as, I mean, in the very early days of 3D printers, as expensive as those things were, I mean, were, were the, was the material expensive? For uh, the, for, for the no, early... the, the initial device was expensive, and um, early on it, it it needed repairs several times. We, we started coming on a first name basis with the tech who would come up from Texas or wherever. Okay. He, so, he became familiar, which was yeah. So if you if you if you put that thing in motion to print you out a battle mech, it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna cost anybody very much money there. Was, no. Um okay. my my boss was like, Yeah, if you want to print up your own stuff that's like small and cool just let me know beforehand and we'll print two so that i can have one to help promote the machine so okay that way too well, that's cool so when uh when i come to vancouver if i should be so lucky as to see the pj offices could you show me your little panther oh yeah that i would i think like i have a that. uh Here, I'll um, just put a picture of it in the chat. Okay. All right. Oh, I see it. Oh, it's so cute. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh oh, I just shrunk everything on my screen here. Hang on. Let's see. I get <laughs> OBS back up and that back up. Oh, I'm such a pro streamer here. I swear. It's that. Where did Winamp go? There it is. Almost back to normal. Almost back to normal. Except for your, except for your uh, little thingy is gone. No. There we go. All right. So I was trying to click on that link and I got it. We're good. We're back up again. Okay. So there it is for everybody. Ooh, it's so cute. And that was done with the same 3D printer that also designed Stargate props. Yes. That's awesome. That is awesome. I love it. And I like the colors too. That's that's 228 318 Swamp Fox's colors right there. Very good, okay. very good choice. Very good choice, sir. There's a reason why I like you, right? <laughs> oh, and then I have another picture of the actual 3D model as well here. 
so I can put that up. Oh, okay. This one down here. Oh, okay. I see. So yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. I like it. Fun with 3D printers. Well, yeah. It, I it felt silly to have access to one and not build things for it. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. So, aside from aside from the work that you did for the Stargate series, building the props and everything, were you? How much of a fan were you of the Stargate series? Did, I mean, if um, I had I had caught episodes before, I thought the show was kind of neat, and then um, a friend of mine really likes the show. Uh, she lent me the first four or five seasons the summer before I ended up there, and so I watched the first four seasons like in in two months or whatever, and caught up pretty quickly uh, it, it was a little further on at that point um but no i started really liking the show and and, and i thought that was kind of neat and then i didn't think about it for the next couple months while i was you know going to school and doing a bunch of other things and um then uh people from my school contacted me about this 3d scanning job with some people and i went there and found out what it was and i was actually with this friend at her um, wedding rehearsal dinner when I got the call that they were hiring me. So it was, the, it was the, kind of fun. The 3D scanning job, was that really working for the, the studio or the, the company that designed the props for television and film? It, yeah, it was the same people. They just, they were trying. Well, the thing with 3D scanning was we could scan stuff and then print it right it was really where we were going with that or we would scan stuff and send it out for like uh there was a place that could do really large scale foam uh, uh cnc and so we could get stuff done that way as well um or we even used it a couple times to scan things we've made to um send to visual effects So I was, I was going to ask you how you got in or how you ended up landing that job, but you just explained it all right there. That's pretty. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're, you're thinking ahead here. I like this. And everyone I met, like how they got into prop building was like, nobody planned to do that. They all kind of ended up falling into it. Like my, um, my boss, he was a sculptor. And so he saw all his painting art friends doing lithographs and making tons of money off their paintings because they only had to paint one and then they could just make copies and he got really fed up with that so he learned mold making and you know what you need a lot of mold making for film building building foam versions of everything and stuff and so right. that led him into it as well it's... other people fell into it weird ways it was really bizarre okay well you held up that chip a minute ago. That was something that you did yeah. with, the, with the laser cutter. You still got that? Oh, yeah. I, I do, but I also have this tablet that a fan sent me a replica of. It's black. It's not painted, but um, this was something that got made before I was there. I think it was like only a year or two before I was there, but um, after the, the show ended, uh, one of the this fan, he contacted me because he wanted input on some of these things that I'd built, because he bought a lot of the old Stargate props. And I mean, a rather significant amount of them. And uh, I still occasionally provide input on the, some of the stuff he's getting his hands on. Uh, and then there's there was another guy in Chicago who had actually bought enough pieces of the universe gate that he was interested in trying to put it back together the universe the entire gate yeah well, oh. we built two one of them was the 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 gate on the ship that stayed where it was and the other one was the traveling one that they put in all the other places whenever they went to a planet and and he had seven rings of one of them or seven pieces of one of them and two pieces of the other so we had all nine pieces of one 
to that each, somehow. Wait, each, each ring was nine pieces? Yes. There, there's nine chevrons on each gate. Okay. See, if you look at the picture on the, on your stream right now, there's nine triangles on it. Oh, okay. Because I thought maybe, like, if you took, like, the top two pieces, I'm looking at it right now. If you took the top yeah. two pieces, that'd be, like, one section. But you're saying, yeah, each one is... Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. All right. So... I'm now I'm just envisioning my apartment. You know, like the, I, have, I have a wall behind me here where I have my projection screen. And I'm trying to figure out if my wall would be big enough to put a Stargate there. Because that would be freaking awesome. Uh, we did build a smaller one for an MGM promotional event. And it was only like 10 or 12 feet tall. So it still wouldn't fit in a normal room. Yeah, I think my... I think my ceiling's only eight feet tall, so that wouldn't work. But I, yeah, no. I could, I could, I, could, I could easily cut into the ceiling and just protrude it into my neighbor above me. They wouldn't mind. <laughs> uh, no, they're, they're a lot, a lot bigger than that, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm sure they are. That would be. What about the super gate? The Ori uh, super gate. That that was all CGI, right? That that was the year before I got there, so I, I don't even know. Oh. Okay. Uh, I, I assume they have piece of wall that they because I know they had a, like a clip where Carter's in a space suit going up to it and I, I assume they built a piece of wall for it but I don't think it would have been very detailed Were you ever actually on set or did you guys always work off set? We always, I always worked off set occasionally we would send people to help the on set props people with with particularly tricky pieces or you know one of our guys was really good at costuming stuff too so if we you know those, those spacesuits while we were talking about we built some more and and he helped with those a bunch of times um but no i never i never went to set to work uh in the five years i was there i went down to the actual filming studio five times and what like, and like what, what and that was just like oh hey we're picking up crew gifts at the end of the year or there's an event or something and, and that was it did you get so the, I almost never got did you ever get to meet any sorry. of the cast members yes i met i met a bunch of them um occasionally i'd you know see them at the rap party or whatever at the end of the year um i actually met amanda tapping through sanctuary the other show she was making oh i remember that one because <laughs> they their production studio was actually across the street from where we were working and so they would come over and get stuff from us all the time and a, a lot of the people from that show were former stargate people so it was just it was a bunch of friends just working across the street and so we we built a lot of stuff for that show as well okay so so amanda tapping i mean i i obviously i've never met her she seems like she would be a nice person what i mean is that she's She's really funny. She's really funny. Uh, yeah, she was. She was great to work with. I mean, it was only for like uh, a couple hours that we were working on something, but no, it was just hanging out, and it's like me, her, and one other person in a small room for an hour, laughing the whole time trying to get stuff done. Nice. Well. Uh, okay, so. Oh, I've already asked you all these questions. I'm not scrolling down my list fast enough here, Mark. You gotta stay on me, man. Okay. Uh, who are your Who are your favorite characters from? Well, who are your favorite characters? Rodney McKay. From... Rodney McKay, really? R Rodney McKay. Why Rodney? Um, I I just loved his hilarious attitude the whole time, where he's panicked and trying to. You watch the show; he's the one saving the day every time. I, what, like, I, I think I've confided this in you before, <laughs> but and, and I, his his arc over the series is really great. Like at the very beginning, you know, you just kind of hate him, and by the end, he's the hero. He he's the one who actually progresses somewhere and turns into something, like like where he's the one solving all the big problems. The other people with him are solving the smaller uh, oh someone's shooting at us problems. Or, yeah, because hey, when another... someone's shooting at you, that's always a small problem, right? <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. Well, I know what you mean. Compared, what you mean. compared to the, the the larger 
you know, problems that he's solving. Like, I, I mean, it, you know, Amanda Tapping, uh, Samantha Carter was kind of the same thing with the other show. And it's like, no, some people shoot pe- shoot back at people. Some people blow up sun. Yeah. It's a good line. Well, okay. Anybody else besides Rodney or is, is, is when you, when you think of all the um, characters, Rodney's just the, I'm, I'm going to feel bad because I've forgotten the character's name for a moment. Oh no. Describe the character. It, no, no. I, Googling I gotta... it. Uh... Eli Wallace. There we go. Oh, from SGU. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that 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 just felt like me all the time. Like you know, when when you're just this weird new fish out of water with a bunch of these people who kind of all know what they're doing. Yeah, that was it, me it, well, working on that show. Yeah, because he he got onto that ship. He he wound up there because he was playing a video game. And exactly. He, he just he just figured it out. Yeah, that was. I think it's like every video game player's dream right there, isn't it? I mean, didn't they didn't they just build that dream into the, the whole series just for that initial hook? Uh, also, and while this is not confirmed, I strongly suspect his wardrobe is based on my own, because I wore uh, a graphic t-shirt, jeans, and a hoodie the whole time I was working there. <laughs> and and I, think, I think the costume designer may have taken that as an influence. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to talk to her since. No confirmation. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll send this. Uh, I'll make I'll make a highlight of this interview here. Put it on my Twitch stream. Upload it to YouTube and everything. We'll make we'll make sure uh, I, we'll make I sure they probably, see it. I could probably find her again somehow. Okay. Actually, uh, her brother-in-law was one of my high school teachers as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if if there was if there was a, a an individual episode of any one of the three series where one of the biggest props that you had a direct hand in was visible what would it be oh um it's from the arc of truth uh one of the characters uh merrick pulls out when, when they're on the daedalus or one of those ships he pulls out this drawer and he switches one of the weird Asgard chips with an, another different one in an insidious plan to muck things. And, and he actually puts it right up in front of the camera at one point, like this. Uh, here, let me get that chip. And it's like, here! Um, and uh, what was funny about that was like, I was like, oh, hey, something I made and I've got a nice clear screenshot of it from the show. That was cool. Um, it was like a, a year, year and a half ago, I got contacted by some people on a Nintendo forum of some kind. Apparently, the the actual little piece of PC board I'd used inside this chip thing is from a Virtual Boy? And and they figured that out? Whoa. And, and, and they were wondering whether it was, and I'm like... And they're like, hey, wait, we know someone who might know about this. And so they contact me, and I'm like... I'm not even someone who might know about it. I totally remember building that. And yeah, you're probably right. It wasn't intentional. I just got, you know, a pair of chips. I don't even remember whether I got them out of a bin or whether Props Master handed them to me, but he was like, we just need two of something. Find something this big that you can get two of. Okay, because, you know, you always build one of something. <laughs> um, <laughs> always. Always, always build two of things because stuff breaks. Right. Uh, right. I remember I... hearing hearing a story about uh, the TV show House, and he got this cane, and they're like, "Oh yeah, get get a bunch of them." He's like, "No, no, I've got this one, and I like it. And it and it's just the one we're going to use the whole time." And like, it, it broke a couple days in. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, now nah, what do we? You know, um, stuff happens. Stuff breaks. Always make sure you have spares. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have. I was gonna. I was gonna try to look it up, Arc of Truth, but I can't. I don't know if I could isolate that one moment in the in the movie. But I'm going to. I'm gonna rewatch that one here before the weekend comes, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna look for that. Unless you have a screenshot of it. Uh 
I found I found the thread where people were talking about it. That later. That's there. Uh, I, it'd take me a little while to find the uh, the actual pick, but uh, GateWorld.net is a is a great resource for Stargate stuff. I highly recommend. Yeah, I've been to GateWorld.net. They, they were they were actually invaluable as I was working on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I, you wanted to learn about everything really fast. That was the place to go. And well, that's what I did. When you really need to know the lore, who do you go to? Do you go to a, a random Reddit page, or do you go to a message forum where the real nerds hang out? I mean, uh, I went there because I yeah. could just watch the I could watch the uh, screenshots of the episode were really easy to find, so I could find visual references very quickly, and they had summaries of the episodes. I watched a lot of the um, like when I got on there, I started watching season nine and. Uh, to pick up where SG-1 was going. I watched the the two-parters for season one and two of Atlantis just to pick up where things were going. And then I continued watching the rest of the show as it came out. All right. Well, I'll go back to my questions here. Uh, oh, the big question. We started talking about this before the interview started. Stargate yeah. Origins. Yeah, I know almost nothing about it. Right, but what do you I'm, think? I'm literally at, you, I'm you, literally you, at Gate, Gate World clicking on a link to learn about it. Okay, because I, I know you've been at PGI for the past two years. You've been a game developer like you've always wanted to be. But, I mean, when, when, did, when did you learn about Origins? Did you learn about it like many of the rest of us did when we saw the post on Reddit or in vague entertainment news stories here and there? I, I want to I say I learned about it two, three weeks ago. And then I didn't, uh, I didn't really read about it until probably a week ago. How would I have learned more about it than you? Huh? Uh, I, uh, no, I, I learned about it the same way everyone else did. They're making something. Well, what do you think? Apparently it's about Catherine Langford, and so it's kind well, of a prequel thing. Yeah, but I don't understand how that story's going to work. Because I... Her dad I, I, un, 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 I, un, un, uh, dug up the gate, but they couldn't get the damn thing to work until Daniel well, figured no, it they, out. They did get it to work. That's what Torment of Tantalus is all about. Is the that guy she liked went through, and they never met him again until oh yeah, the show. yeah. So we're just gonna see the story about how they work on getting that thing to work, and then the guy goes in. And I don't. I, I, that sounds that's the terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have no idea what else they're doing. Uh, I, 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 the I would, I, I'd like to see an origin story on the Tok'ra or the Asgard or something that when the Asgard decided to go to clones or maybe that's just me. Maybe that's the geek in me. But I, uh, there's so many. There's so many origin I, stories. I, I'm sad to say I I doubt that's gonna work because like the actual Asgard guy that you see. Uh, was actually like a well no no he like the the prop the the puppet oh um, uh, the the latex foam that they make those things out of like I don't know if you've seen some of the old Muppet type stuff where it's gotten old and degrades and no no he was he was definitely end of life at the end of uh, Atlantis when we used to blast we were actually um, allowed to make permanent changes to it because that was the very last time it was going to be filmed. Oh, okay. So 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 I I they'd have to make a whole new puppet for that and you know, yeah, you could do those things, but I'm 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 thinking CGI's come a long way since Oh yeah. Since then. So I, I, but I, again, you know, a lot of it comes down to is there money in it? That's true. You know, could you do it? Could you do it as a comic book or a novel? It'd probably be a lot easier. I know there. I heard talk about a an SGU continuation comic that just got announced or something. So. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Too. I, I'm kind of interested in that. I, I'm actually a lot more interested in that than uh, yeah. The origins here. Stargate Origins. Yeah. Well, I mean. 
I don't know if Origins if Origins works if the series thing it's, it's, oh, it's, it's going digital only for I mean at least until I I have uh, you know that friend of mine who really likes Stargate I'm fairly certain they're probably gonna watch it and I'll just ask them if it's good and then take their recommendations well I'm gonna watch it you know my discord <laughs> so, well I'm, I'm, def yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna check it out tell me too. yeah I, I mean I'm, I'm definitely gonna check it out it's a Stargate series if they if they if this truly happens and they get it done I'm gonna be watching it I'm a, I, I I can't not watch it and so I'll, I'll know within the first I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a fair shake I'll, I'll watch the first five episodes and I'll know if I like it or not and of course everybody has different opinions I loved SGU a lot of people didn't like it I didn't particularly care for Atlantis but a lot of people did so you know it, it's, it's how it works with everybody yeah no, it's, it's different. I, I got the, why a lot of people didn't like SGU. Uh, it was very different. I happened to like it. Uh, I also thought that there were several episodes that were not good at all. And, you know, that, that was still apparent. Um, and at the same time, you know, most of those are not in the second season because they figured out how to make episodes good. They, they figured out what wasn't working. Well... That's kind of. I'm pretty sure I covered all the basic questions there. Is there anything you wanted to add to any of it? Uh, anything you don't feel like I hit on enough? You want to just go to. You want to answer some questions from the viewers here? Uh, we can answer Twitch chat questions. I'm okay with that. Or we can just start dropping in Max and. Answer them as we go? People. We could do that too. Okay. Because I can read Twitch chat and and talk back while I'm shooting at enemy max. Yeah, you don't have ADD like I do. I mean, I might not answer them that quickly, but. Oh, and there you are. You're in game. And there you are. All right, I am going to oh. switch to actually. I'm just gonna turn the game on. We're gonna turn off that, that, and that. Okay. I'm going to be blocking a bit more of the screen than I normally do. So I'm actually going to shrink. I'm going to shrink your webcam. Let's see. Bottom left. I want to make our webcam smaller. Uh, center. Bottom left. So just so you're not blocking quite as much. Yeah. More of the game here, and then I'm going to do the same for mine. Not my usual overlays that I use, but we're not going to worry about that. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right. Spectral fire there. Spotted. I have the Lego Saturn V rocket up on my shelf there. All right. I'm that not gonna. Birthday. I'm not gonna do the Uziel though. I'm gonna do the Medusa like you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with the Viper, and each drop will just change to another mech of mine if you have it. What do you have in your Medusa? Oh, this is the one with missiles, remember? Oh, yeah, 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 you said that. I put all heavy small lasers in mine. I, I switched out the ER large for a heavy large, so I'd have a bit more punch. But... All right. See if we get a drop here. What do you mean? Of course we'll get one. Well, yeah, we'll definitely get one, but what I mean... All right. It was a figure of speech. <laughs> it's all good. When I when I say that, when I say let's see if we get a drop here, I'm meaning a, a a good one, a good drop, good map, good game mode. Because everybody a, has a their, positive like, experience in a timely manner. Yes, that's what I mean. But I mean everybody has their favorite maps and their favorite game modes. Yeah. So that's that's what I look for. All right, everybody, we are oh, dropping with the. Uh, Viper Medusa's one of uh, one of Mark's 
one of Mark's personal designs in the game. One of his, not personal design, but one of the mechs that he did the 3D modeling for. We're going to do some other ones as well. Some of them I haven't even played yet, I'm sure. What were you going to say? I, I just remembered someone asked about uh, the, the giant Stargate uh, Tourmaline Desert. Oh, yeah. Which is actually... It's the center ring of an overlord dropship. Shush. Shush. It's also not big enough to be a super gate, and it's too big to be a normal star gate. It's, 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 it's a... Oh, we'll come up with, we'll come up with a new name for it. It's not a super gate. It's too big to be a normal gate. It's... It's an XL gate. Yes. No, 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 it's a mega gate. Mega gate, okay. You, you, you put mecha through it. You put mecha through the mecha gate. Yeah, I keep saying that's the Stargate. We know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not. I can tell the difference. I've heard that same thing called other things that we probably shouldn't say on this particular stream, but I, I've always called it the Stargate. I like to think it's the Stargate. I know it's a dropship, but that used to be. No, I get why people call it the Stargate when they're trying to just call places. It, it makes sense. I always tell people I remove the crystals, they can't use it. Uh, I, I, I think I might be able to get some extras, so I could probably get it working. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't have them, I know a guy. Uh, so. You know a guy? Yeah, you know, actually. I'm talking, talking about the underground Stargate black trade here. Uh... Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I do know a couple people who are avid prop collectors. And one of them has a significant supply of Stargate props. The other one has a reasonable one. So if I really needed it, I could I could get one of them. What about Zach Gun? Uh, yeah, no, he has one of those. Ooh, I want one of those. He has he made it work again. Uh, he was in Vancouver late last year. And uh, well, he, he, but, but he brought by, it with him. By work, you mean it just pops up, right? Or does it light up too? Does it actually make I, the sound? I thought the sound effect was, a, was an added in sound effect. It it had action and it did have sound. Really? Ooh, I want one. I have to find one of those. I bet I... I bet I could probably find a replica somewhere. I don't think I can afford an actual. Uh, uh, no, he he actually put uh, he rebuilt a lot of this function because there was only one that worked. What's uh what's another good prop that would be fun to have? Um, uh, we only ever had one working staff weapon. Ooh, uh, a DHD. That was actually. Online. Yeah, DHD would be good. Sensors the staff online. weapon was funny because Weapons whenever online. we were filming, we just had like the front half of a staff Four weapon and that was the one that opened and closed and you'd just never see the back of it. And then they'd replace it with a non-action one whenever you were seeing the whole thing. Um, so we just made this one that worked and it, it was actually MGM had requested it. They just wanted it for their office. So they were like, here, spend some money, build a one-off of it. We want one that works for us and so we got it working and there was one hour where we were between it working and putting it in a crate and sending it to MGM never to be seen again huh. and that happened to be when my brother and his kids were coming for a tour <laughs> oh of course so he, they got to see this working device and they were the only people here who would have ever seen it unless MGM Thank shows you, you. so it was pretty cool. Ooh. Trying to find these guys. Oh yeah, I got lots of movement. Delta three. It's that annoying LRM guy. And again. they're learning me. It's okay. I'm learning them. Oh good. Feel dirty. <laughs> I'm not the one playing with lerms. <laughs> I don't feel dirty at all. <laughs> Jump juice twenty five percent. But if you have fun with them, that's all that matters. Oh, that's how they're shooting me. There's a stupid opening there, Drat. I gotta wait for this 
smash to get in close because I got these heavy smalls. There's no range on these things. Nope. I, I just thought I'd try it at least. They pack a punch. I do a 45 alpha with these things. Oh, yeah. They'll, they'll hit hard, but no, they've got zero range. Oh, I didn't put... I didn't put my consumables on it. That's a mess up. Uh, hey guys, they're pushing Echo 5 through Delta 5 right now. So I yeah, would you circle around or address them. Your call. Get in there. Get in there and kill them. Kiasiendo. Oh. oh, geez, it's a bad guy. LRM douchebag is after you. You what, mate? Reactor meltdown detected. We got somebody back there. Do we? No, that's one of our guys. Too far. Too far. Jump juice twenty five per cent. Oh no, it's that annoying LRM. I shouldn't be again. here. LRM douchebag is after you. Right arm is getting wrecked. Next potato. Enemy UAV up over there. Hold lots for LRM. Right arm got ass blasted. Heat sink yeah. destroyed. Are you still alive? Oh yeah. Too this much thing to you idiots. Flies too much to be dead already. Wow. Oh, geez, India, it's focus a bad India. Guy. Get him, he's almost down. Good kill. Fight me, bro. Push him, we got the advantage. Push him. To pay respects. It's blazing hot here. Your internals are cooking. You what, mate? Alright, uh, Rick, it really is a cool shot right now. Me too. <laughs> we have the meltdown detected. Your internals are cooking. everyone. I might have done like a hundred damage. I probably did a hundred. One ninety four. Three hundred. I surprised myself. Okay. Yeah, me too. I apparently got a kill somewhere. Okay, there we go. I'm I'm gonna stick with that version. I think the heavy large is uh doing Mark, I will be right back. I'm just going to use a little boys' room here real quick. Okay.
All right. So, are we gonna just do one drop a piece in each mech, or do you want to do two drops? How do you want? How do you want to do it? Uh, just one each. I think I'd like to stop at the end of the hour. Okay. Uh, so which one do you want to do next? Let's grab the huntsman. And I just so happens I've got the the, the packet. Did I hear you say that? Packet. Packet. I've got mine already ready to go. Skilled and everything. I, I made sure this morning that I had a skilled up version of Free Mac somewhere. Alright. What do you have on yours? SRM6s. Okay. All, all the SRMs. Right. And the dual ERPPCs. Yeah. Those high mounts on it. It's a good mech for that. It is. And, and, and you can put missiles, ballistics, or lasers in the torso. And, and they've got nice high mounts for all of them. Did we not get any questions from the from the viewers here? Uh, one or two that I was answering while they were going along. Uh, Oh, I know a question I think I forgot to ask you. Um, in the SGU final episode, we see Eli yeah. alone on Destiny while everybody else is in stasis. In yeah. your opinion, for how long does Eli survive? And if he survives for long, what would be your idea of how the story would play out? Uh, uh... I remain confident that Eli was capable of getting out of that situation. And um, Joseph Malazzi, one of the producers, on his blog somewhere is speculation about what they were planning for season three. Uh, so you can go read that if you hunt it down. Uh, oh, there's a good question. Hard point placement. Uh, yeah, we get a lot of... Uh, the artist tends to be the major driving force there. The original art is a huge factor there, and uh, we do get some design considerations about whether stuff really needs addressing or not, or, or if it, you know, like, is this going to be way too good or way too bad? You know, we don't... No one likes it when you shoot something and instead of hitting the enemy mech, you shoot that mound of dirt in front of you. No one thinks that's a good idea. And at the same time, if every mech just had every hard point in a line going out from the uh, cockpit, that would also be boring. So. But yeah, usually a, a lot of the little things, we, we put them wherever uh, we think they work. Uh, you know, some mechs will be like, oh no, this is totally a big deal that this is this way. You know, what should we do here? We try to make sure mechs have something high in places and they're not all down at waist height. That, that sucks. Uh oh. What? What's wrong? Terra Therma. Terra Therma's great. It's hot. That does not make it not great. I know, uh, but I'm in a hot mech. Well, whose fault is that? Hush. Because <laughs> <laughs> guess what? The enemy team is probably going to have people in hot mechs to deal with it. Well, we're in the group queue. There's probably a big group on the other team that had the multiplier, and they're all in night gyres. <sighs> Well, then we'll be in trouble. Yeah, we will. Uh, my, my mech doesn't run cool either, so... Ah, let's see here. At least we're in the same lance this time. Yay! Yay! Just remember, it's not any hotter than Caustic Valley. 
All you gotta do is manage your heat. Yeah, I'll be all right. I guess I guess a lot of my dislike for Terra Therma is, is just residual from the original Terra Therma because the new map is better. It's certainly better. Be wary on how many times I fire the lasers. I like the new map. I also I kind of miss some of the um, the vertical aspect of the old map with all, all the slopes. Yeah. The new map has has less of those. Um, but no, the new map did fix a lot of the problems the old one had, and you know it it, it the biggest problem it had was the symmetry. You couldn't tell which of the four corners you were in because they all just kind of look the same. I think I still have that issue a little bit with the new map, only because, I mean, I play this game almost every single we day of the online. week, and I can probably count Senses one online. hand how many times I actually Weapons see this online. map during the week. Whereas other maps like HPG, Grim Portico, I see those, I, I, I can't even count two hands how many times I see those maps in a day. Yeah, I. Yeah. I, this is the first time where you've asked me a question that is that I get to give the the simple answer, which is I just model Max and right. I don't know the answer yeah. to that. And you know, sometimes I'll start trying to involve myself in some of those questions so I at least know what's going on. But even then, you know, half the time the answer isn't something I can share. <laughs> I, a part of it is, I guess, people just aren't picking it. But yeah, that's 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 a big part of it. Uh, I think a lot of it. I shouldn't say a lot of it. Uh, I'm I, I'm guessing that a lot of it uh, has to do with. I mean, is there is there a setting that, that ready. He, tactical? Is there a setting ready. that PGI can do that uh, determine how often a map can come up in a rotation? Or... Yeah, there there are map there are there are map voting weights. I know that and. I, I don't know what they are look like lately, but I have seen some of them from before. Um, I think I might have even published them changing them, or or what they were at some point. I, I know I know they've said they've been changed. They've uh, upped the map weight whenever they'd added a new map. It would make it show up more for the first week or so. Is there like Canyon Network? I hardly ever see that one at all anymore. But Grim Portico and HPG well, currently they seem to be. Those are the two maps that we're playing on the most, it feels like. There's also the fact that there, there's a bit of fatigue for Canyon Network after last year's tournament. Yeah, that was a year ago. It's all your fault, Mark. Uh, it's all your fault. You gotta get in there and fix that. <laughs> okay, that's great UAV. Whoa! Oh, I think uh, we found yeah, that. wow. That was, that was that's a remarkably good UAV there. That was not where I was expecting to come from. Right on golf. Just out of my range. Hits on golf. Right on hotel. Came into hotel seven. They're running out of that way. Right on fox. It's on Fox Drive. It's that annoying LRM guy again. I gotta move from here. AC 130 inbound. Focus Hotel, he's pushing the missile boats. Hotel down, thanks. Tactical nuke ready. Right on Charlie. Bad guy here. Right on Lima. Hits on Lima. Need help with Fox Drive. Tactical nuke. Right on Fox Drive. Hits on Fox Drive. 
Foxtrot down. How you doing? Golf next. Hot. Oh geez, it's a bad guy. You taking the bus, mate? Watch out. Ah, missed it. LRM douchebag is after you. Oh, how is he spotting me? It's that annoying LRM guy again. Okay, too hot. Press Much too hot. Definitely way too hot. And in a lot of trouble now. That was my squeezing arm. You what, mate? Too much heat, you idiot. Yellow mode in game. Yeah, there I go. It's blazing hot here. 500 damage. Too much heat, you idiot. Another potato inside. Right torso. Wow, these there. guys are fresh. Yeah, those guys getting you were the ones that ended me. That's blazing hot here. I, I shot that marauder in the back once and that was it. Too much heat, you idiots. And then I think there's a linebacker oh, over there somewhere with the, his back's wide right open. Torso but... is destroyed. Good job. Right arm got arse blasted. Left leg is getting wrecked. Ah. Yeah, yeah, that was what happened to me. <laughs> well, at least we're winning. Maybe. Next we are. Potato. Royal Wii. Yeah. Oh. We were winning. It's blazing hot here. Still technically are. Oh, oh the guy's name is TIE Fighter. That's clever. Ah ha ha. Locks for LRM. Left torso is getting red. This guy's brawling, zoomed in. Urban mech with one light machine gun. A bunch of lasers. Too much heat, you idiot. You taking the bus, man. Oh, geez, it's a bad guy. Alright, they can do it. Oh, this guy's name is Trash Can Hero and he's in the K9. This is awesome. Yeah, I saw that. They got him. Good job, team. Hey, we won. When you change the mech commander voice, he really doesn't seem to care about us on the ground. Ah, uh, he's just misunderstood. <laughs> Do Which... you do you use Which any sound I will packs? quote from the sound designer. Do you, do you use any of the sound packs, the uh, sound pack add-ons? I'm I'm not gonna comment on sound packs. Well, I thought sound packs were something that we were allowed to use. Uh, it's more complicated than that, and I don't want to be the person who talks about that. Okay. I know. I'm sorry, but. Because I, I use that one from uh, uh, from Rax Armory. This is just because it's funny as hell. But I don't know. I I I was always under the impression that they were all right. But that's all right. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm I'm not gonna comment on it because uh, there are people above my pre grade who should comment on it if they need to and. Uh, I'm staying out of that mess. Okay. It's, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I, I'm, I'm not worried, but yeah, I, I'm not going to say anything about that topic. Okay. That's all right. Okay. I'll speak for all of us. I Supernovas. I... Oh, yeah, that's right. We're switching mechs. Okay. Uh, and, and I think this is... Salt. Probably going to be the last one. My... Yeah, unless you want to change to a different mech. 
Uh, do you want? Do you want to go to? No, Super Move was fine. I got a couple of these skilled out or, already. The, the assassin javelin Uziel. I, you, know, you know what? I'm gonna bring my triple heavy large laser triple lerm 15 one that I built with you on stream. Yeah. In you. There we go. Okay, that's this is that the only, even this, better. This is the only time you're gonna get me to voluntarily bring lerms in a drop. Excellent. Yeah, it's not excellent. That's all right. We'll do it. We'll do it. And mine has ATMs. Is there any place I draw from when designing a mech? Um, well, I mean, obviously, Alex is, is providing me with concept art, which you can see on like the sale pages and stuff. That, that concept art is what Alex gives me. Uh, along with a lot of other stuff. And then, yeah, no, I... Uh, like, when I was doing the Assassin, I had my little Assassin Mini from the tabletop game on my desk. I, I went and got it from my pile of mechs that I played with people, because it was at someone else's house. I went and picked it up, brought it to work, and put it on my desk as I was building that mech, because, you know, paying attention to the, to the original source uh, uh, is important, and I, I try to, you know, keep it in line with what people envision at the same time as following the concept art very carefully. Okay. What about a mech like one of the Unseens that PGI is bringing back? Uh, how does that work? Because I know PGI changes the designs to make it not be the same as the one that might be in question how, how does what 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 that, that's what, a whole can of no comment right okay. now is that because of the current lawsuit exactly okay no and, and the answer is with, with a pending lawsuit no comment is going to be exactly it's going to happen okay just well we won't discuss that then how about that <laughs> Excellent. We'll just leave that topic alone. Well, it'll be a boring topic because every answer will be no comment. <laughs> well, so I will just leave that topic alone. Yeah. And, and for anyone curious about the future, the answer is every comment about that topic is going to be no comment. Just given pending legal issues. I've got which, my, if you I've, paid attention to any situation in which there are pending legal issues, the answer is always no comment. Right. You know. I got the, my. I've got my own personal thoughts on the matter, but I'll just keep those to oh, myself. Oh, I have. I have tons of personal <laughs> thoughts on the matter. I could. I could share my thoughts on it for quite a while, but. You nope. Know, that's. It's not going to be helpful to say anything. No, D Scout. You can ask him that. Because you just did. Uh, are we planning to make any more original mechs like the Roughneck? Uh, mech announcements are something that we... Uh, I don't get to make. Someone else makes those. So, uh, the answer is I, I can't really comment on that either. Well, I picked Polar Highlands because... Well... I'm in Lerms, but it looks like we're going to get Forest Colony. It should be interesting. Not everybody gets angry about them, though. For example, I, I like the fact that the Roughneck was created. I like the fact that we're getting a new mech. It's it's gonna it's being added to... There was a bunch of really weird pushback. It's like, oh, no, it's not canon. It's like... Well... Why is Alex and Randall Bills on stage kind of saying it is at MechCon? It is because it is canon you know, now. They're put. They're gonna. It's gonna uh, we're, we're gonna see that mech in the tabletop game, correct? Is it already in the tabletop I just, game? I don't know exact plans for that, but uh, it might. I I would think we would. I'm. If I'm we make another with... original mech, would I like to model it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the artist who did the roughneck. Uh, I, I think is is one of our. I think he's better than me still, 
and, and I was actually glad I didn't get the rough neck because I, I knew it would be he did an excellent job pulling that off and there's a lot of extra detail in that mech uh, he, he put a lot of extra work into that thing Reactor and it shows uh, Senses and I don't know if I could have done online. it that much justice all systems are dank Oh, I need to set my weapons groups. How many heavy large lasers do you, can you shoot before you trigger ghost heat? Is it two or three? I think it's just two. All right. Oh, has there been any discussion on a 2010 clan chassis? Uh, yes, I have actually been really pushing that discussion, personally. Because I know you guys want a 2010 clan mech. Uh, I want one too. Uh, another developer recently ready. was really pushing the Howler ready. for some reason. I think what? Russ even mentioned the Piranha at some point. What's going on, Wizard? Well... Oh! oh. Wizard's dead I, right I, now, you can't talk, sorry. I mean, the, the Piranha well, just the seems... I know, like right? ...like a no-brainer. In fact, most people are having a hard time figuring, trying I'm to figure out why we haven't seen the Piranha yet. Yelling at Ninja Monkey for leaving the unit. Come on! Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, no. They had a bad sexual night one night. Probably and, gonna have uh, a little better chance of pushing through golf night. I think that's a good idea too. Well, you guys doing that? I'm gonna move up Hotel I'm, Eight I'm on the hill. At least give them some. I, I, I have ended up involved in, in, in mech down. selection, okay. and I'm enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Not so well, right. and, and yeah, and no, I've been telling people that Piranha is a thing we should be doing at some point. Through the past. Are you saying we're going to do this with Toph? Because the Toph is a bad idea. The Fire Moth and through how we're going to be the ones we've also considered. Kind of considered. They're kind of posting up that. They're all in the back range at the moment. Someone take, uh, through the guard pass take company command and start issuing out some orders. Uh, you taking the Kim Cave. Uh, I am aware that people haven't seen the flea. The uh, might so. be aware that just before I started working here, I They're made a run fan model thing. of the flea. Unless there's bot more than and one of them. It's actually on the forums until. if you want to go find it and download it and print it or something. So, because I, I built Enemy uh, a different right model to generate interest in myself when I was applying there. I built a crab, and then a lot of people in the forums really liked it, and they were like, "Hey, you should build a flea." So I did, but also part of the reason why I built the flea was that I didn't think it was actually worth next victim putting in the game. Because I think the locust does everything the flea does. One of the things when we do Another consider new maxes is, is, is it add something? Or is it just the same as another mech with a completely different shape? But all the hard points are exactly the same. Or boring. Or LRM. You taking the bus, mate? AC-130 ready. Tactical nuke ready. Next potato. AC-130 ready. I'm in the back, shoot my learns. Hold locks for LRM. You can't be in the back shooting them, you have to be up. You gotta you gotta share with everyone. But that's what learn boats do. 1v1 me, bro. Uh then you're the you're part of the problem there, man. <laughs> oh my D. AC-130 inbound. Fight me, bro. Yeah. 
to meltdown detected. Tactical nuke ready. Tactical nuke inbound. You want me? Too much heat, you idiot. Wow, that's hot. You taking the bus, mate. Bad guy here. Next victim. Fight me, bro. LRM Amolo. Jeez, you're disgusting. Hurt. Right torso is getting red. One v one, me bro. It's blazing hot here. I was gonna kill that guy. Oh, too yeah, much heat, you idiot. Ow, ow, ow. Yellow mode engaged. Oh, geez, it's a bad guy. That centurion's about dead. Charlie. Oh, I'm down. What? Why are you yeah, doing this? They, they caught me. Rip large laser. Left torso is getting wrecked. Your CT got wrecked. Next victim. You, you just put those, all those into that rock. Not all of them. I'm not a alarm guy. LRM ammo depleted. Nice trolling, GG. There you go. You got him. You, you avenged me. One v one, me bro. Oh, good. I just got two heavy larges left. Yeah, just run in and get him. <laughs> Next potato. Oh, he's uh, another potato him. inside. Yep. Yeah. Last one left too. You what, mate? Go for his leg. Go for his leg. Yeah, farm the damage. I can't believe it. We won, and I brought Lerms. I even killed that guy with Lerms, didn't I? You did. <laughs> I feel so dirty. Alright. I did 533 damage with my Blurm boat with heavy lasers. Where are you at? There you are. 706 damage. Nice game. Yeah, I did pretty good. That stalker we had still alive at the end. It did more than. All right, sir. Oh, well, that was it, a good... It's a little after midnight my time. I'm normally getting yeah. out of bed right about now, but yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you taking the time with me. Uh, I'm glad we could uh, get all this uh, or a lot of the conversations that we've had down into kind of one one setting here. I really appreciate you come by and doing this I, I hope I didn't uh, didn't get out of line anywhere I don't not used to doing interviews you know it's that you're actually the first person I've interviewed like truly interviewed since I started streaming because usually we're just having beers playing the game and just asking general questions because you're like the expert in Stargate and 
mechs and things like that. So usually it's just yeah. Usually, usually we're we're doing this where we're just playing the game and talking and it's... yeah. So I I hope. No, it was fun. Okay, that's good. That's good. Well, again, thank you very much. Uh, any last words you want to say before we call the night? Uh. Okay. If you guys have have more questions, you can find me on the forums or send me a private message there. And and Mark does. I, I do check them. Yeah, he 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 was uh, he saw the post I made on Reddit. So the devs do read that stuff. So if you if you yeah, I mean they they check it out. A, a lot of a lot of developers do read a lot of the stuff. the The issue is is, um, will posting actually help the conversation move forward? And most of the time, the answer is no. So you know can read it without commenting and, and still actually use the feedback and, and another thing that another thing that I have learned especially from playing this game and, and meeting and talking to the different devs that I've talked to was Mark or Chris, Darren uh, Lauren and uh, any of them I mean People who've been following my stream for a while, they've known that I've had my issues with this game before. Uh, one thing in particular that I've had an issue with re semi-recently was when the minimap was changed. I was not happy about that change at all. But if you can bring up the issues that you have with the game in a respectful manner and not acting like a total douchebag, Chances are you'll get uh, a friendlier response to the issue, or if, if you can be an adult about how you bring up your issues with the game, you will get an adult response. And I found that tends to work in all factors of life too. Come to think of it, you know, it's just <laughs> it, it's it's funny though, isn't it? How yeah. you know being uh, semi polite and respectful, not even polite, polite, you know, being polite. Being polite goes a long way to uh, people really paying attention to your opinion. Yeah. So I mean, I I brought, I brought up my issues about about the mini map. At the first time I did it, I wasn't very respectful about it. I didn't get any reply, or some of the replies that I got, not from PGI staff members, were not very friendly. When I brought up the issue again in a more official forum, they were. I brought it up in a more respectful, polite manner, and I actually got replies even from devs that were, were uh, informative and and decent answers. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what form you bring it up on, whether it's the official, official MechWarrior forums, the Reddit pages, etc. If you have issues and you bring it up and you're polite about it, you're going to get uh, polite responses that make sense and uh, and probably have a real conversation about it. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, hey there, yeah. I, hope can I, all, I hope you all have yeah, a good night. Is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who who reads it might not be the person who knows the answer. That's true. And, and so that can sometimes be an issue where it's like, oh, they have to go hunt down the person who has the answer and then get back to them. But, you know, but I, I try to answer questions when they're relevant to me. And uh, if they're not, Sometimes I don't answer, okay. or I'll say I don't know the answer. I, I, anyway. I, I've learned my lesson. I keep my mouth shut most of the time now, unless I'm streaming, of course. But yeah, y'all have a good night. Again, Mark, thank you. Darren, you're thank welcome. You, thank you for the for the mech pack to give away, and thank you for the the, the new followers, uh, the people who, who subscribed, etc. I'll be back tomorrow night, sometime between four and five p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope you all. Have a great night, y'all. Peace.